So I, I didn't um, have anything going on at this moment in time. So I just decided to come on for a little bit and talk. What y'all want to talk about? Y'all want to talk about spirituality. Y'all want to talk about health and wellness. Y'all want to talk about lucid dreaming. These are some of the things that I'm good at. That's why I'm mentioning these things. You want to talk about creating your reality. You want to talk about living in the now. You want to talk about astral projection. What are we talking about tonight? <laughs> bless you, bless you, bless you. How to align your life so that it's good. Well, that's a good one right there. Know that it's good already. That's it. Quantum manifesting. Oh, y'all already over here on the mindfulness channel. Nobody over here talking. This is my health page. I got both of my pages up. <sighs> oh, that was good enough. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, okay. Um, I got both of my health page. So let's talk about the Mandela effect. Oh, y'all got some juicy conversations that we can talk about. How about we can talk about all of them, a little bit of all of them, since I got free time. The first one was aligning your life so that it's good. The next one is going to manifest it. And the next one is um, the Mandela effect. Aligning your life so that it's good is about you mentally knowing that it's good. Because it's really um, your reality is what you're thinking it up. So you just knowing it good. To get to this place in my reality, once upon a time, I have to align my mind to get here already. To know that I'll be able to do an early retirement. I had to see myself uh, feeling free, experiencing retirement. Feel like I wasn't going to work. So, for example, I played a mind game on my way to work. I'd act like it was the morning where I'm just getting up early because I wanted to go sightsee. I wanted to go hang out with, you know, some old friends and my mom. Yeah, I knew I was going to work. I knew I was doing the work. But I was aligning my mind already to be in that state of being. And this ties hand in hand with quantum man manifesting. Because everything that you want in the physical reality is already here. It's already been created. If you understand that ener energy is neither created nor destroyed. It's neither created nor destroyed. Then you know that everything just is. Everything is. It's already here. It's already created. So really, you're just trying to get your mind over there. And you spend more time getting your mind over there. <laughs> and you spend more time getting the energy of over there, feeling so good, having fun over there in your mind. When, I'm when I say over there, I'm only talking about your human imagination. Because really, there's no doing for the quantum jumping, for creating um, another reality. In, in where everything is good besides you thinking that everything is good already right now <laughs> yeah we gotta connect to that field basically it's just the energetic field that we're trying to connect to the field is already there the energy the momentum the everything is there besides you and your thought so what you're doing is thinking you're using energy when i say energy all things are energy your thoughts or energy, your thoughts or <clears throat> electric energy. So your thought is like the masculine energy. Everything is tied to a uh, tied to uh, energy or frequency, and everything is tied to kind of like a gender too, right? So your thought is the masculine energy that's going out into your subconscious mind, your word, your spoken word, and your habitual thinking, all of that electric energy but then you have a magnetic a feminine aspect of that which is your heart your heart is a magnetic field of energy and so by you thinking about whatever that is that you want to quantum jump to or the life that you want to experience and you feeling a feeling like how does it feel to be there already those two things put together <laughs> equals an electromagnetic field of energy and so when this electromagnetic field of energy, these two things come together, you are creating momentum. You're releasing the resistance, so to speak, because you might ha not want what is. But because that you changed your mind and gave attention to another thought of what you want to be, 
you release in the resistance of these things over here. You change, you turn your other cheek, so to speak, like in the biblical text. That's what it was always teaching mindfulness. You change your, you turn your cheek and you let this mind be in you now, not this mind. You renew your mind. And so now you have to experience this new experience that you've been imaginated and had a heartfelt feeling about. So basically you quantum jumped over there. Here's the key with um, quantum jumping over there though. You have to be in your body. So if I was, okay, I'm going I'm to quantum jump. I'm going to create a, a scenario, so to speak. Let's see. Let's see. Um, I, I don't know. I want to be, okay, a teacher. Let's say I want to I wanna be a teacher. I want to be a teacher. So I'm creating the environment. I'm using my human imagination. As me being a teacher, I'm imagining myself with my little lesson from my students. I'm imagining the students. I'm sorry. I forgot the time. Who is it? Who? Wait, one moment. One moment. I'm sorry. I'm right at my door. One moment. I'm coming. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so um, anyway, so I'm being a teacher. So if I'm being a teacher and I'm thinking about these students, I'm thinking about, you know, how how precious they are. I'm imagining myself in the classroom and it just feels so good. But being that I'm using my human imagination, I'm in my body when I'm quantum jumping over there. I'm in my body. So I cannot be. I cannot be just looking down on myself. I have to be in my body. So I can't see my face because right now I'm sitting on this sofa and I'm in my body. I can't see my face. All I can see is like my hands, the small, you know, the, the um, lower part of my extremities, my legs, my feet. So I, in my human imagination, got to imagine that I'm sitting at that desk right now. When I imagine those children, I have to be, see and experience them right now like they're looking at me because i'm in that classroom i'm in that body and so while i'm in that body this you're using your human imagination to quantum jump there through the door but to get your emotions and your feelings involved you gotta use your senses while you're at that desk for example so to use my senses i would smell maybe the wood of my desk i can touch maybe the top of my desk in my human imagination. I can hear the children laughing and playing with one another in the classroom. You see what I'm saying? I can I can maybe I can maybe touch or 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 or, or taste a certain thing already. I'm having that experience right now. That's akin to quantum jumping there. All of your emotions have to be into play with your whatever it is you're trying to manifest. And so so that means you're not I'm I'm on this sofa, but my mind ain't on this it says I'm on this sofa. My mind is in that classroom. I'm on this sofa, but my heart it feels so bubbly and it's leaping for joy because I'm so happy and I'm so in love with these children and it feels so good. I'm just pretty much using my human imagination and this reality is kind of dissipating and I'm quantum jumping over there. And I do this often when maybe this reality gets boring. Maybe um, I got to go to my other job because I'm not really in this lifetime, the teacher just yet. And I'll quantum jump there when my, my other job, so to speak, gets a little mm, chaotic or, or I'll get bored with it. Quantum jump to be that teacher that I really, really want to be and talking to those children and my heart just melted. And so now I'm so in love. Now that elect, that, that um, magnetic part, that feminine part is growing. The thoughts grew with the electric 
or the masculine and now the feminine cord is growing now the desire for being in that state of being versus this state of being is growing all of this is just energy all of this is energy so now being that i think about this maybe once a day or i drift to sleep thinking about it and i go to sleep with a smile on myself because i i enjoy being in that state of being more than in this state of being oh i'm just drawing this thing to me um that energy is growing so i'm drawing this thing closer to me and it has to give way for me if I do not have the resistance if I this is the, this is the part that, that took me alone you gotta get this here part now the resistance come in when when I am in my boring or my old reality I'm like man maybe I'm just wasting my time Man, I really, really want it. Why I don't have it? Man, it's been 372 days and I know I deserve this. Why, God, why? All of that, that's resistance. Here's the part that you gotta get. You gotta get this part. You gotta get this part. Don't miss this. You ready? You ready? This is the part. You gotta have so much fun doing this in your mind that you don't care showed up yet this is the part this is the part that is the part of aching to leave releasing the resistance it's like i don't have it i don't have it it ain't the end of the world that i don't have it i just enjoy just thinking about it i just enjoy quantum jumping over there to experience that thing because that's aching to you releasing resistance and you not holding on to no attachments of the idea. Because when you hold on to attachment of the idea of it, like, man, I don't have it. I thought since I'm 30 years old, since I'm 40, 50, 60 years old, that I have it by now. And so I don't have it. So maybe I'm doing something wrong. Maybe I'm a failure. Maybe this year. Now you're creating resistance and you're pulling yourself away from it now. So now that's aching to you, making yourself self suffer along the way when it's supposed to be fun when it's a quantum jumping experience that you're supposed to be having fun until the universe yields it to you yes let me see what else i see each other up in here let's see yeah you gotta do the emotional part too how do you interact with your religious family now that you've elevated them ah uh, the same way they respect where i am in my journey, and I respect where they are. When they talk about Jesus or whatever, I respect that. As a matter of fact, my fa my mother, who is um, a minister still, she came over for the holidays to visit me. And she was even here for the countdown. And she was like, you know, you want to pray if you still do that? And I was like, I'm going to do my mindfulness or whatever. And she, you know, she's still talking the same language about Jesus and stuff. I understand it because I've been in religion so much. And so when she say um, things like that, and just in my habitual thinking, I'll be like, oh, she talking about herself. Like, oh, I can relate to that. She just, she's just giving that energy to Jesus. And I respect where she is. We get along just good. And, and they respect where I am in my journey. My mom told me before, <laughs> She told me before that she wanted me to come back home to Jesus, so to speak. And I used to tell her, you know, in my language, I'm already home. I finally found my place. I found my way. I'm happy here. So she, she, because that's all she knows, and she's kind of afraid. You know, she's an older generation. She's kind of afraid of the unknown, the places that she haven't visited just yet. I visit those places, and I don't have that so-called say it here. And I don't, I don't see going back to religion. I feel like that'll be a step back in my journey of evolving to my higher self. That's right. Yeah, but we, we communicate this well. But there was a season. That's a good question, though, because there was a season in my journey where we weren't speaking. Because I was so-called the black backsider in my journey from leaving church and everything so we weren't speaking and that was actually initiated by me because i got tired of being called this black sad i got tired of everybody telling me look you need to talk to jesus 
I got tired of that noise and I needed that, that state of peace, that, that, that uh, mental clarity in order to stay focused on what I was doing and, and getting to know myself and the fear tactics that they would press on, you know, cause you're a backslider for one, then you're going to hell and then you maybe the devil or maybe you went to voodoo or whatever and all of these here crazy stuff or so I got tired of that noise and I cleared that noise for myself for an appointed time. And I really think clearing that noise let my family know, look, she's serious about this thing and she ain't gonna let nothing separate her from evolving in this particular area. So let's just leave her alone because we rather we rather make peace and be able to be part of her life. <laughs> than not be part of it at all and so then when we got back together it was it's just an, a known respect level now i don't judge them and i'm hopeful that they don't judge me but if they do that that's on them because it is what it is at this point <laughs> it is what it is you got to be serious about your journey because you probably you're gonna leave some people behind in the beginning of your journey that's just it you're gonna leave them behind because energetically going back to energy energetically you're not vibing on a frequency no more anyway so there's going to be some little you know rough times a little turbulence there you vibrating on a spiritual journey and they're still in religion in a religious aspect but you're trying to stay together with them for the um, idea of being attached to them for um for bl by blood so to speak and i'm reminded of in, even in the biblical text when the christ conscious one had a parable about Take here, this is your mother, this is your father. He who do, does the will of the father, that's your family. And so I look at that to say those that are actually vibing on my frequency, those, hey, be three humble, those, those are my family. Those are the people, you know, that is my tribe. You know, I stay connected to my mother and my siblings and whatever because my mother, mostly because that's the portal that I came through to experience this thing called life. But that really... To be honest, it might sound a little cold-blooded or cold-hearted to somebody that really don't understand spirituality. Really, your parents, that's really what they're there for. I mean, I have children myself, and my children, I was the vessel that was used for them to come through to this portal to experience life on their own. They shouldn't live life based upon the way that I tell them to live. I don't even want them to do everything that I tell them to do just because what? Because I said so because I'm their mother. No, you have your own experience, God. You're here to create your own reality, God. Now, I will share with you wisdom and knowledge and, and order and instruction on how I see things. But the way you act, the way you behave is predicated on what you want out of this journey, about out, out of this life. And I really did my, 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 my just with you when I raised you up and brought you up with a strong foundation when I brought you up with an open mind so that you wouldn't be in a box, a limited box, like I had to get out of. I set the tone to make sure that they had greater. You know, that's really our jobs as mother and father. I believe that they have a greater pathway because if you think about it, collectively, we all are the ancestors rewriting, so to speak, the wrong, revisiting the physical realm in a different avatar. And each lifetime, whether it is from your mother, then the children, then the grandchildren, each lifetime, we should be getting greater and greater and better and better and expanding mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically into a higher state of being. And once I once you do that with your children, I feel like you've done. You've done what you were supposed to do. You did right by them. <laughs> so I don't hold on to any guilt or anything from that. Hey, Joy Peach Girl. Yeah, that's it. I don't, they don't owe me. I don't, I don't, nobody don't owe nobody nothing. No, you think that in your mind. Nobody don't have to do what you say. And, I, and those parents that, you know, some parents are strict like that. And and I, I get it. I get it. But they're like that because of the things that they've been through. Sometimes we share, we share and spread that on to each generation, you know. Because great grandma said, because I said so. And then the mom would be saying, because I said so. Well, when it got to my turn, my mama was the type of mom that was in religion that was talking about because I said so. And I'm like, okay. Because you're going to always need a me, <laughs> is what I'm saying. One that's going to be dared to be different. One in lifetime that's going to break those generational curses. And when you walk up into me and I start peeping game in the physical reality, when you give birth to a me, 
we gonna be like, okay, I can't wait till I'm 17 to get up out of here because okay, we're gonna do it like you said. Because I need a place to live until to then. But when I'm 17, I'm gonna put all of this year stuff aside and I'm gonna explore life how, how I see. Because you never answer no question as to why I have to be in this religious mindset. You never answer no question as to why we were eating these type of things. You never answer no question as to why I got to work till I'm 65 years old. So guess what? All of them things, I'm going to do different because you because I'm, I'm, I'm the generational curse breaker here. <laughs> and not only do I stand firm and proud about being that, I got to break this curse even the more when I get forth to new life because I mean, darn, if they're going to go and repeat that stuff that I've already been through and experienced with you, you bopping me upside the head just because I wanted to know why we had to get on our knees all the time and pray and why we had to come to church so much and why I have to wear a dress all the time. Nobody could answer those things. I was told only to believe you bopping me upside my head because I don't want to eat this here type of food. This food don't digest in my body properly. I don't like it. I remember when I was a little girl, I was, I've always been like really, really, um, kind of like dairy, like to do different. And I just, <laughs> and I did just that when I was a little girl, I hated spinach. I hated spinach so much. Spinach was the nasty still. I don't still to this day like spinach. Now spinach I, is GMO, like right. When I was a little girl, my mom would actually make me eat my food, just different things that back then I hated that didn't agree with my body. She would make me try to eat my food. And I always used to be the only one in the kitchen till like ten o'clock at night. She'd be like, You ain't gonna leave the table until you eat all of your food. I'm like, but why? why you gonna make me suffer because i don't like it this is the kind of things that i i wanted to figure out that's why i'm a different type of mother I, why i gotta suffer why so you gonna feel i used to tell my mom stuff like so so it's gonna make you feel good if i don't eat my food because i don't like it and then you gonna whoop me because i don't like it make that make sense though make that make sense so why you why you do stuff like that you love me <laughs> I used, to, I used to quit and then I get in more trouble for stuff like that though. But the logic behind it, some things that really don't make sense to a generational life um, uh, breaker, so to speak, somebody going to change that dynamic. And that somebody turned out to be me. And so I would stay up in the kitchen till like 10 o'clock because she had to come back up in the kitchen till like 10 o'clock at night to, to put the dishes, I mean, yeah, to put the dishes in the pots and stuff up, up in the refrigerator. I'll still be up in there and she'll be like, go to bed. Now move on to right here, right now. <sighs> move on to right here, right now. This same person, the same little girl that dared to be different with, with religion, with, with mindset, with eating everything, that same little girl understands. She's a woman now. And she understands that those foods that she won't eat, she understands it was tied to her gift. Her gift when she has a connection with herself on a cellular level. When she under, she can taste something and know if it's organic or know if it's a GMO. And she now is into holistic health. And she now understands that those things that she was being forced to do, they were not registering with her body. They were making her experience sickness and dis-ease because of her gift of discernment energetically with those foods. And so that's how I know so much about herbs and stuff. Because I, I could just sit there and I could just be still with my body and I could know if it's working for me or against me. But my that was my gift back then that was showing me that it was was against me. But the the, the parents, <laughs> because they don't have an open-minded relationship at some times in, in the journey, they were making me suffer. They were making me go against the way that I felt. You see what I'm saying? That, I mean... I understand respecting the house that you're underneath, but if you raise your children up to have an open mind and even a transparent relationship, they're not going to be caught from the respect thing with you. But I'll tell you one thing, what they will do, they'll grow. They'll, it'll allow them to spread their wings and fly. It'll help them on their journey because all my, all my upbringing in the house up until 17 years old was like, let me, let me just do what these people say. When I get out, and it, I'm going to do it my way finally. And so when I finally got out, I was like, I'll, I'm going to cut y'all off because I need some clear space. I'm going to cut y'all off because I need to figure this thing out. But here's the thing about my mindset. Even though they told me, you know, you can go to hell. You know, 
Because when you leave church and when you don't do what they say, they get the fear attack because you're going to go to hell. In my mind, I said, okay, I'm going to take one for the team. I'm going to go to hell and experience this thing for the team. But what I, what I will not do is rinse and repeat like all of you all or have been doing. I'm going to dare to be different. I'm going to think outside of that box. Because I already feel like I'm in hell right now. So what what is going to get worse than this here right now? I don't know myself right now. I'm sick right now. You know, at that time I was saying, I, I, I don't have no freedom right now. I feel like I'm being controlled right now. I don't want what you want out of life. So, so I'm the devil now. And so that just kind of egged me on to get up out of the house and think differently and, 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 and separate that relationship if it meant, even if it meant forever to me. Me getting to know myself and me get answering questions because my soul was calling me, my larger part of me was calling me every day as a little girl. Come here. Don't do that. Read this book. Go over there. Ask him why. You see him, stay away from him. I heard that all the time. All the time. And then at the same time, the elders, since they were in church, that was his elbow. That was the devil talking to me, you know? <laughs> I'm like, the devil? But it tells me, it tells me things. You know, this inner voice, this inner dialogue that I have, this relationship with myself, it tells me things. It's never bad things. What do you mean it's the devil? Don't, and they always say, don't talk to it. And so you, you get this kind of chaos from people that don't know themselves. You get, get all of that foolishness. Just like the people that, you know, like, um, they'd be like, ooh, don't open up your third eye. No, don't open up your third eye. No, they got the devil in there and the pitchfork in there and you're going to die and you're going to see demons. And no, no, no. All them people that saying that, they, 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 they are just as tight, sealed, shut as could be. And that's their fears. They, that's what they fear going to come out of there because they've never been in there. Ain't no, it's it's going to be in there with every skeleton that you put in there. And if you put in the, the skeleton of fear, that's going to be in there. If you put a devil with a pitchfork, if you believe in that kind of thing, it has to show up. That's going to be in there because it's all in your mind. All is this here thought process. Yeah. Yeah. I would say I love them for where they are and who they are. Yeah. That's that's what you got to do with them. And no and no judgment. Don't, don't judge them. Just let them live their life. Let them live their best life. Because I look at everybody in the conscious community as if, or the non-conscious, the collective community, so to speak, as if we all have like this imaginary alarm clock that we all set for an appointed time. Yeah. Yeah, you were the black sheep too. Uh, yeah, definitely. So we have um, an alarm clock that we have set for an appointed time. And, and, and sometimes that time is not this lifetime. You know, you know, sometimes it's that time is that they have to experience another life and have to experience or a near death experience in this life or have to experience several deja vus or or some type of lucid dream or something major in this life or wait to next lifetime because we, we just we just recycling. <laughs> we just recycling, you know. I am my, my great-grandmother, and we're all recycling over and over. So give them that, term, that time, that season, for them to get together with themselves and get to want to know themselves for themselves. We can't, we can't go up in nobody's room, so to speak, and be like, all right, it's time for you to wake up. You God, and come on now, use your superpower, zap, zap, twinkle, twinkle. When a per when you're trying to force somebody, even in physical reality, to wake up, they're gonna get mad at you because you woke them up sooner than their time. They get mad at that person. You wake them up before that alarm clock went off. Now you 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 the enemy, so to speak. You the problem. What the hell wrong with you? I was sleeping. Shut my door. Turn my light off. Leave me alone. I don't want to get up this early. That's really what they all gonna say. Yeah. My poor sister sends me scriptures because she thinks that I'm lost. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but you really, you really once was lost, but now you are found. Yeah, that's that's how that thing go. So, but nobody sent me those scriptures no, no more. <laughs> no, if they, 
if anything, I'd be like trying uh, try to tell them the, it, when they want to hear, when they ask my opinion on it. I'd be telling them, well, this scripture really talking about da da da. It's talking about this. He ain't talking about that. You look at it like that, but I look at it like this here too. Because I believe that there are so many hidden jewels in the biblical text where you could transform that thing and apply it to however you want to. It's just based upon where your mind is. Because I've read the biblical text over 30 times while I was still at home underneath my mother's home because we was in church so much. And each time, each time I read from Genesis to Revelations over and over, I can't, got a new profound meaning. But what was happening is that my mind, my mental capacity, my thought process, I, myself, I was evolving, you see? And so as you evolve, you get a new meaning for things, you know? It don't mean the same no more. Kind of like the biblical text, they say, when I was a child, I thought as a child, I spoke as a child, I behaved as a child. But when I became, I put away those childish things because you're not long, you're no longer the same being, you're no longer the same uh, consciousness. Your consciousness is always evolving to a, another state of being. I'm studying the Bible, Melody. Oh, that's good. That's good. And so then when you start to study that as far as energy is concerned, as far as it looking at it as parables is concerned, what I've concluded is that it's all just energy. And we all is, are part of that energy. What I've concluded is it started with energy, atom, in the beginning, for the so-called first man, atom. And atom, that energetic force, was all of those people in that biblical text just going through different states of being until it became a Christ-conscious state of being, Jesus, so to speak, the teacher, the rabbi. And that is what every last one of us do. And once we are dying in order to be resurrected at once we are the dry bones we are sleep we are domicile we are the old contract we are just conscious but then we evolve to the new contract or the new testament where we're subconscious and our subconscious is connected to our conscious meaning that we're using the right and left part of our brain then we evolve and go through these different states of being and finally we're in the new contract or the new testament where we are the Christ conscious one. That's it. <laughs> yeah, I want to get it right this time. You are getting it right, sweet. You are. Oh, wow, they're not ready for that conversation. Yeah, a lot of people is not. But that, you know, don't, another biblical parable, let's not cast our pearls amongst the swine. Those who are ready, see, they had a whole bunch of people in the beginning of the life, they weren't ready. So guess what? They know how to excuse themselves <laughs> when they're not ready, when the conversation is a little bit too above their head. But but I don't spend. That's why when I talk about conscious stuff, I'm like here or I'm on consultation. In my day-to-day, -day, I'm just a little average, little fit-in type person that if nobody don't ask me nothing, I ain't trying to cast my pearls amongst all of the swine because they're going to find me. They're going to find me energetically once they get on the frequency when they ask them the question. That's why, and they don't ask the question until they are ready, until they ask through thought. And that's when the universe or their subconscious mind will yield to them and experience or they'll stumble. Those people out there would actually probably stumble on me, me over here online. And then they'll be like, oh my gosh, I never even knew you did this. And oh my gosh, now you're somebody that I could talk to because they ask a question. And now the universe or their subconscious mind yielded to them the answer that they needed to receive to get to the next point in their journey. But those people most often did not even ask them. So we don't go and just to cast our spur uh, pearls among some swine. Before I got bored, I was on the um, tick to the dot, just scrolling through people's lives. And I was saying to myself, wow, TikTok is really so cool because you can see all of these people, all different expressions of God, just expressing themselves, just answering all kinds of questions. Some people are on low frequencies, some people teaching on high frequencies, some people teaching about businesses and some about hair. And, and you just have a, a plethora of, of different expressions of God, right? <laughs> and
and I passed by this girl. She was she was a really great speaker, and she was really engaging. She had about 587 people up in there, and, and I stayed there for about two or three minutes. While she sat there, and she talked about when her and her boyfriend was having a fight, and he was drunk, and he was about to get in a car and drive off, and she, she was breaking up with him or something like that, and she cared, and she didn't want him to, to leave driving because she knew he was drunk. But she was such a good, engaging storyteller. But I'm saying that to say, those people, her little tribe, are right there. They all, those that were there and say there, were resonating on the frequency of where she was. Those that got out of there, like me, <laughs> those that got out of there was really message, or was really ready for the totality of the message that she was delivering. Because they wasn't on that life energy frequency. It got a little bit too much for them. So they had to leave. So even in my sake with her, it got a little too much. You know, because I can't really relate to you wilding out in the streets and being drunk and driving where I am. I can't really relate to the overindulgence, you know, when I'm sitting here in place or state of being where I'm mastering mine and mastering self. I can't really relate to having a boyfriend that, that, that was doing the cursing and all of the things that she would say. I can't relate to that because now energetically I'm not on the frequency with that type of energy. So let me excuse myself because I ain't ready. I ain't woke, so to speak, to that idea of living. I'm woke to another idea of living. So that's really, really important to understand in your spiritual journey. You're kind of meeting or experiencing that like energy. You might not be all the way there, but you got, sometimes we have like that residual, like that little, the little crumbs still just left there where we might be picking up frequencies of other people that's, that's, that's on a maybe a little lower frequency. But when you get a little high and you clear yourself of all of the little residual, you ain't vibing with them people no more. And that's okay. Because to be free, if live consciously free, is to have no attachments to no thing or no one. To realize that you are the one. That you are the operating power. And that you are all that really exists. So glad I'm 44 now. Woo, yeah, that's a blessing. Yeah. That's a blessing. You write about that space. Oh, wow. Okay, let's see. All me. Yeah, it is all you. How do you master the mind? That's a beautiful question. I'm glad you um, you spoke of that. You master mind by being able to control, so to speak, the thoughts. Being able to be still with yourself like meditation type practices, that's how. Like for example, when you have a a, um, a small attention span, you should really work on it by, I don't know, I share this exercise all the time by, you know how they have the little popcorn, because you always, if you're in a house, you always have some kind of something on the wall, whether it is the orange peel or popcorn or whatever, you control your mind, you could begin rather with using this here exercise and I'll show you why. So you will find, if you have orange peel, you will find a little line on the wall, the ceiling of the wall, and you pay attention to it. You find one little spot and you keep your eyes on it. You try to do this for like 10 minutes. You keep your eyes on that spot. And at the same time, you pay attention or you're hearing the sound of your breath or if the AC is on, you can hear the AC unit. But your eyes are there and your ears are on the breath. I mean, yeah, on the breath. And you're breathing. You're feeling yourself here in your inner space. So what you're doing here with your mind is you're giving it something to pay attention to. You're giving it a command. You're giving it a command and it's working on your ability to control it and tell it, no, you're looking at that dot right there. I also need you to listen to my breath. I also need you to feel the breath, me inhaling and exhaling. And I need you to do this now. 
No, 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 no. Come back here. I don't need you to worry about if the door is locked. Because he starts to, his, his, the mind likes to run and travel and think about old stuff, memory, or old stuff that's coming. No, no, no. I need to be, I need you to be right here right now. I need you to do what I said to do. I don't care. No, I don't need you to ask me if the stove is on. I don't need you to ask me well, where my keys at and where them children are. I told you to look at that dot. Listen to this here. Crack and feel it. And be still with it. And so while you do that, you learn. That's a form of meditation. That's a little small little meditation practice. You learn how to control that mind and be in the now. And so now you pull that practice to your everyday life while you're thinking. Now since you've got your mind's attention, you know how to give it a command. Now in your habitual thinking while maybe you have work or something, and you start thinking, you may be in a conference room, y'all in a, I don't know, a meeting or something, and your mind starts to wander. Now you can tell it, get back here. Pay attention. It's almost like you're training a little puppy dog or something. Pay attention. I said do this here. And so now you can move that over to when you're eating. Telling it, it's listen up. We're not eating this food, this type of food anymore. We're not eating today. And so even even when it's giving you hunger pains, like I'm on a fast, when it's giving you hunger, hunger pains, guess what? You're not hungry. You're okay. Stop it. Because you ultimately control the cells of your body. So if you're controlling the cells of your body, you're controlling your mind. You're controlling your thoughts. When them thoughts start to drift off to something negative, what, what you doing? This is your inner dialogue to yourself. Why are you thinking that? That's over. You still over there? Get back here. We're now. Pay attention to this live. People are commenting here. Why are you in the past? We're in the now right now. You have comments on here. Read those comments and get out of that past. Get out of those thoughts. That's gone. That's gone. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anymore. We're moving on. Life is happening through you, not to you. Or, or you playing the victim. And so you begin consciously controlling your mind. That's what being conscious is all about. Being conscious is all about the ability to control your thoughts, yourself. To know the I am is you. I am that I am. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Miss Lovelace. Yeah, that's so true. Mm-hmm. Road rage. Yeah. Thank you. Person, I personally need this right now. I did that last night on the road. I told the ego to perform the F down. Someone wanted to engage in. Yeah, and you'll find that you're manipulating that energy. We could always kind of like, you know, tone down those cra crazy heightened experiences by the way that we respond to them too, you know? Our thoughts, our thoughts, keep putting them things back in, putting them things back in. Because everybody could, you know, flip. You know, with God, it ain't nothing wrong with you. You could get the ego, the ego get up there and be like, I wish somebody would. You know, that's easy. You could go up on somebody easily. You could give them the bird through the sun roof easily. Up yours and all that easily. Like, right? You could damn near run them off the road easily. But baby, it takes the ability to control that mind and focus to not when it seems as though they have struck a nerve to not react, but just respond and move on. That take that take that take a skill. And so this same skill, what I'm teaching and sh sharing with you, is the same skill that you need and your ability with the law of assumption. You need the ability to focus with your human imagination. So you gotta play these little games until you train this mind with the ability to focus no i said pay attention to the dot on the wall no i said we're not going to respond to him on this road we're going home we don't have time for that now don't even look over there now keep your head straight i don't care if he's blowing at you i said we're going home 
and we're going to have a beautiful evening and we're going to cook such and such and we're going to embrace our family. We're not going there. So don't even look over there. And you know, you get to a point where you, it's just you. You realize you, you got the juice. <laughs> you got the juice and life is happening through you. And all of that is, is really what that is outside of you that's, ha that's having you act out like that is simply your other thoughts, your reflections. You know how like they have in the biblical text, they have Jesus and then they have the 12 disciples. Well, coincidentally, the 12 disciples correlate with the 12 zodiac signs, the 12 months of the year, right? They're really, if you look at the zodiac signs, they're all different personality traits, right? So that 12 really represents the thoughts, the expressions of you, your doubt, your worry, your, 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 your quick temper, your ego, whatever you will, however you want to name them or word it, it's all you. It's always in your mind. So you had a thought that, that, that somebody over here on that, with that road rage, you had a thought that was full of road rage or that somebody was out to get you. That was your thought. That was in your mind. So since it was in your mind, it had to show place. You had a doubt, maybe. Just going back to the biblical text. So, so in the Christ conscious one, Christ conscious one was teaching us a parable of his or its ability to doubt. That's why we have he had to experience in that allegory text a doubting Thomas. You see? And, and, and so he had a thought of betrayal. That's why there was a so-called Peter. You know, he had a he had a he had a thought of someone who would be a good servant, so to speak. Someone of pur purpose and purposeful and righteous and perfect in the eyesight of God. Right? So so there was a thought of a, a man named Job. So all of these people, these reflections are really your thoughts. And so what people are saying to you and doing to you is really stuff that's in here that's got to come out in physical form to express itself, to show you, be a reflection, to show you you and the way that you think. <laughs> because life is happening through you. Your thoughts have to come out and experience themselves too. You're giving birth to these thoughts. <laughs> And you keep on giving birth to those thoughts in your mind. Then they keep on have to show themselves to you in your physical reality. Like you ever met somebody that moved from one state to another state and they still have the same kind of problem, so to speak. They move from one job where they're like, girl, all the people was messy. I had to quit that job. And then they move over here to this year job and they're like, girl, everybody messy. These people messy too. Well, guess what? Their thoughts <laughs> are really the things that's messy. And so... Since their thoughts are on the idea that everybody out here is messy, then they have to show, those same thoughts have to show that person that, yeah, everybody on every job is messy. I can't find a job that they don't have messy people at. And it's in da 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 and so forth and so forth. It's the game of life and it happens to you. Yeah, I was supposed to be watching things. Oh, <laughs> they got a game going on. I don't even have a TV in this house here. Uh, I don't watch TV, but I had TVs in my other house, and I ain't beat it. I ain't bringing out one TV, so I don't know nothing about what is it? What is it? Basketball season or something? Cause um, I'm so I'm really clueless when it comes to those type of things. I don't watch TV. Is it basketball season? Is it football season? It's still football season, right? Cause I know football will come on for like November. Huh? Yeah. Oh, we about to be. In some kind of playoff or something. I'm college championship. See that? I remember some of that stuff. <laughs> oh, basketball too? Oh, okay. In the football season. Yeah, because I remember like for Thanksgiving, the game, football game always be on. And then they have the Super Bowl and stuff in January or whatever. Yeah, but I'm not into none of that stuff. I don't, I don't even know nothing about that. Nothing. But I know everything there is to know about me. Yeah, I I don't know nothing about that. I don't watch no stories, no none of that. When people tell me about little conscious movies or whatever that they say that's really good, I watch them on 
my computer. But outside of that, um, mm -mm. Mm -mm. and my son, my son will tell me about the good ones or whatever, because he know I don't even want to see some of the ones that some people be um trying to share. I just like to keep my mind just open to, you know, infinite and uh, possibilities instead of games and programs. I mean, it's cool. I ain't saying nothing is wrong with it. And if somebody, a friend or whatever, be watching it, I'll sit maybe next to them. But my mind would not be on no game. I'll be manifesting or meditating or something. But I act like, you know, I'm being there. <laughs> and they know I'm only acting like I'm there because of my, I don't know what the heck going on on the game. Yeah. Well, you drew me in tonight. That's beautiful. You needed to hear. You needed to hear part of, um, a part of what I was speaking of. Your discipline is awesome and very inspiring. Hey, ladybug, look at you up in here. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, you have to really be disciplined. And you know, I feel like I got this here from um, everything is just perfectly orchestrated. I feel like I got this sense of discipline from coming up, being hard on myself, actually, trying to be like hard or more or less perfect. Because um, I wanted my daddy to come home. Yeah. And I just wanted, you know, to just be the perfect little girl. Make my perfect little liver A's and cleaning her room. And, mm, you know, stuff like that. And so it got me in a momentum of doing that. And then when I realized daddy wasn't coming home, I just kind of transferred that energy to my career and going to school because I really wanted to make, you know, good money and do just things that was different, be um, financially secure, greater than people that were around me when I grew up. But that discipline part of my life, it, it became my structure. It became my mental structure is what I'm saying. And so I often just, you know, instead of being hard on me, like I was in my past, I decided to use that, you know, be hard on me in the career. I tried to use that same said discipline in my spiritual journey where I can get the most out of my life. Because the most important thing to me is the matters of my soul in this journey. You know, I went through all of them phases that every typical person go through with, you know, marriage, with a career, you know, with children, with a Graduated from high school, getting the degrees. I got two of them. Yeah, yeah. Whoop de whoop. I don't care about those things. <laughs> the most important thing to me is my soul. Is 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 my spiritual side, my inner being, making sure that I do everything, I manifest everything that I want in this lifetime, and making sure that I leave a legacy behind. So. I'll try those things that nobody else in the family. I'll be that daredevil. I'll be that one that if I have to lay down my life to explore another realm, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> because that's that's that 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 makes me feel so good. That 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 like the conversations that I have, that lights me up the most. Like if somebody were to tap my phone or whatever. They'll hear me getting off and being so excited about different manifestations and meditation type things, different herbs and stuff, and and you know like doing research and, and on um on herbs or healing somebody. It'll be all about the things that I'm talking about here now because this is my freaking life. <laughs> and people tell me all the time you're so out of touch, but I think this is beautiful. To be out of touch because one of them might be out of touch with the football game. I don't know who's playing. I wish all of them the best because at the end of the day, I think that's rigged anyway. I don't care who playing tonight, but I know one thing. I know one thing. I know myself. <laughs> I don't care about what's going on on the television, but I know one thing. If I time out tonight, I've sat down with myself. And I left a legacy behind. And, and I broke all of them generational curses. And I taught my children. I left, I left seeds that I am hopeful that would take root in them. That my 
grandchildren and my great grandchildren will be like, you had a momo. You had a momo and Bergier and she and she and she did this and she and one day look at her YouTube channel because one day she left behind that she fasted for 90 days because she was so inspired by the Christ conscious one. She was so inspired by Dr. Sabre and she taught you how to do it. Yeah, she was really conscious. Yeah, she knew how to quantum jump. Yeah, she got everything that she wanted in this physical reality. And she left this here for you. And she's the reason why you won't have to work. And she's the reason why you ain't got to suffer in this area. Oh, she left it behind. She left it on YouTube. She left it on Instagram. She left it on Facebook. She left it in a notebook. She left it on videos. She left it in all her cell phones. Matter of fact, she kept all her cell phones and left all of the records for you. Because she loved you so much. Because she knew that in the beginning of her life that she was suffering. And she didn't want her suffering to go out in vain. She wanted to be. She knew she was around some people that wanted to, that, that thought in her life, in their life, that they only live once. But she cracked the code and she realized, no, she had been back eons and eons and eons doing the same thing over and over. And she had decided that it was going to be this lifetime that she was going to leave that legacy behind. That she was not going to be back to this particular realm. But she was going to make way <laughs> for you to tap up and you to, you to come and join her where the next realm where she is going. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing here. Hey, Miss Ann. How you been, baby? Yeah. Yeah, me too. You too, huh? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> You have strong, oh, okay, yeah, I read that one already. So that's that's where I am with my mental and stuff. And so when I consult with people, you know, about their trauma and all of this, I feel like I've been through all, I feel like all of my reflections called me. Oh, I've been through that. Let me tell you what I did when I did that there. Let me tell you. And they be like, oh, so wild, girl. Like, oh, my gosh. You have, yeah, baby, don't let the cute fakes fool you. I've been through some things. I've been through some things to be in a position to help you. And so I will. To inspire you. And so I will. And that's what I do. That's what I do all my life. I'm making products. Because I'm retired. I make products. And I do consultations. And here and there I, you know, do little dick knack things. And sit in the sun. Y'all might think I have the most boring life. But baby, I got peace over here that passes all understanding. And the, the most beautiful, the most exciting, the most joyous, the most simple thing that I like to do is to sit outside. And watch my little hummingbirds. I'm a little hummingbird lady. Now looking at me, you know, my family, they, they laugh at me all the time. And they be like, you know what? People don't realize that you just a little, you just a little grandma. <laughs> people don't realize. People probably think you all outgoing and this and that and whatever. You got people um, confused. Right? I, them people got themselves confused because I never say that they, that thing like that. I'm just a little... A little spiritual, little hummingbird watching, creative person. I do TikToks here and there, and that's really my life. Yeah, I don't, I don't get caught up into all of the drama, all of the, all of the little TV shows, and all of the happening things. That's just not me. That's not even something that I really inspired, inspired to do. Because in the lonely moments of life, that's where I met God at. And when I could sit here now, if I wasn't sitting here talking to you all, I would still be sitting here talking. Because that's where I meet God at. You know, a lot of extroverts, you know, they wouldn't understand that side of themselves because you got to go in to meet God. God ain't out there. God ain't out there making noise. Sometimes we got to be still in order to hear the answer. When we speak, we're asking a question, but then we got to shut up sometime and, and get that answer. And so that's why I actually moved out here. Because I had visited Arizona and it felt like heaven to me one day when I visited to go to Sedona. And I said through spoken word and through thought, I quantum jumped here into my retirement. And I said, you know what? This is where I will retire at. The birds felt so familiar. They felt, they felt like in the morning when I looked out the window that they was chirping my name to me. Like, right? And who, who would have known that habitual thought? Is in fruition right now. And this is my reality right now. Retired here in Arizona. With my little birds. <laughs> that's why. That's why things like that. When things like that happen in my reality. It's like. Hey Dish, Dishon. When things like that happen in my physical reality. It's like I know. With God. 
I know what the people are having and saying, I gotta tell these people. I gotta tell them. Definitely not in the sky. Yeah, you're right about that. You are so right about that. <laughs> not in the sky. Right here. You're God. You know, ain't no sky daddy that's gonna come and save you. Ain't none of that. You gotta put on the whole armor of God yourself and be God and get on your throne and understand the God in you. You know, and edify your own church and 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 and, and, and critique yourself and, and and learn again how to use some superpowers that you've been having that you came equipped with. And so that's what I do. I do research on that. I, I love I studied um psychology, I study um alchemy, I study quantum jumping, I study the law of assumption. I've studied numerology. I've studied the Dead Sea Scrolls, the um, <laughs> the biblical text, the Seven Day of Venice, the um, the Thot, the Egyptian hieroglyphics, the all of that, all of that, all of that. You're still you that you got. You put it all together, and you you find an energetic way, you know, a physical way, a spiritual way, a mathematical way to say that you just God. <laughs> We see that peace you carry, yeah, yeah. And you know, sometimes on my on this page, on this page, it's like every time I try to go to pull something on TikTok just to say something, I in my mind I'm like, everything's perfect, everything perfect. And so that's why actually I I, I just post I post more on this one just to give information about the health and wellness stuff that I just think about, but. As far as consciousness is concerned, everything is perfect. And everybody is experiencing perfection. Everybody. Everybody is getting you what they're asking for if you don't. And so I'm at a place on this, on this channel where I just really kind of like inspire. And I'll, and I'll do the double live like I'm doing now on both of these channels. When I'm talking about health and, and, and wellness type stuff. When I'm giving away some secrets to help my reflections that aren't there mentally yet. But man, everything is perfect. Everybody is perfect. I promise you, it's really nothing really to say. It's really nobody that you really need to wake up either. Just as long as you wake up, you attune yourself because you're more good for other people when you're in alignment. You're more good for other people when you stay in that said alignment. You don't come off of the throne of God to pull down and see about nobody else. You allow them to step up to where you are. Because and when you keep that alignment, your alignment is enough energy to allow them to rise to you. Yeah, that's something that I learned in my journey because in the beginning, I wanted to help other people in my family, you know, my friends. But they end up resenting that because it don't be their season like I was talking about earlier. So I just learned how to just be. And that's why my name is just God is just be. I had got to a place in my journey where I was like, you know what? I had like 90,000 people on uh, Facebook that I was inspiring for a couple of years and I walked away and I deleted, I deactivated the whole Facebook account and I decided, you know, <laughs> I'm conscious, man. And when you're conscious, you know that everything is just perfect. Everything is all right. And so what do I have to tell these people in, in this perfect world where everything is in a perfect balance and they're getting to thought the perfect effect because they are perfectly causing it? What do I tell these people? So I ain't going to tell them nothing. I'm going to just be. And that's what I was. I was the type of person that was on this platform, was in, you know, cognito, so to speak. Just, just had deleted everything off of Facebook. Wasn't posting nothing on my YouTube channel because I wanted to just be. And so one day I put a picture up. <laughs> I put a picture instead of having that little, you know, the white little image. I put a picture up and people started following me. People started following me because they remember me from Facebook and stuff. And started messaging me, talking about, why you ain't saying nothing? Oh, you're going to do good on this platform, da, da, da. But I really just wanted to just be. And then I started talking just a little bit, creating a couple of little videos. And, and everybody started coming in. And I just kind of got in the momentum all over again. Once again, when I just wanted to shut my mouth. Once again, what I just wanted to be still and just know that I am God. I opened up my mouth and then people just started following. And so now I just, I just like it. 
come to the bulk of who I am. I'm just, I'm just a free spirit being with no attachment, understanding that all is God and everything is just perfect. And I just like to inspire people along the way and create products along the way so that people can quicken to their energetic self and remember that they're God. Oh, it's out screen. That's beautiful. There you Everything's perfect on the screen, too. <laughs> but I thank you for that, Dosi. I thank you for that. That's beautiful. For the Messiah. Yeah. Yeah. It's your essence that draws us to you. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> I can't get you all off of there. <laughs> You're welcome, babe. You're welcome. You're welcome. But I love to share, though. I love to inspire people. I really do. But I also love my quiet time, too. I love my quiet time. So when y'all don't see, there's days where I don't post or whatever. Trust and believe. I'm somewhere sitting underneath a little tree looking at a little bird. <laughs> Is that oil? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that oil. Huh? Yeah, that's funny. Trust and believe. I'm not on here. I'm underneath the tree somewhere looking at some hummingbirds. Being some hummingbirds looking somewhere in nature. Somewhere studying, you know, some type of holistic something, some type of herb, something. I'm doing something that's keeping me in alignment, something that's making me feel good, something that is just ease and just allowing me to just be. Because I, I, when I was a little girl around um, maybe about 12 or 13 years old, for the company that I worked for 22 years, there was a lineman that came in our neighborhood and he had, you know, a good job. The name of the company is Entergy back in New Orleans, Louisiana. It's a utility company. That's where I retired from. And he came in our neighborhood. And all of the adults, you know, the ladies especially, was like, oh, he got a good job. Da, 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 da. And I was asking the man. I remember it like it was yesterday. I asked him. I was like, what's so good about your job? Why they all like your job? He's like, well, I got a job with good benefits. And, and I'll be able to retire when I'm 65 years old. And me being the, the, the generational life <laughs> changer i was like 65 oh no i ain't working till i'm 65 maybe the 40 but 65 no gee that's too old to be working i ain't about to do that <laughs> and that spoken word that habitual thought has led me here i know what i was talking about when i was about 12 13 year old telling that man that lineman that now i told you that he was a lineman because it's so coincidental that he worked <clears throat> For the same company that I retired from, I got a job at that same company that from you know that that man worked at. It was called LP and L at that time. Where that man worked at, where everybody was admiring, I got on and I worked 22 years there, and I retired when I said I would. I did what I said I was going to do. Where God, I'm telling you. We're God. Beaumont, Texas. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's the same. It services um Texas too. We service Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, and Texas. Entergy. So you know I'm speaking of the truth. I used to actually live in Beaumont, Texas after um Katrina for nine months because we got relocated to the Texas office. I worked in transmission. I was a senior um transmission engineer there. I had a lot of jobs, but that was my last job at that company as a senior transmission engineer. Beautiful working relationships, good company, good benefits, but I manifested early retirement. I, like I said, as a little girl, I ain't gonna work till I'm 65. And I also wanted to do something that I found joy in. I find joy in doing this yet. I find joy in making my products. I find joy in doing consultation. I find joy in seminars and retreats and stuff like that. that I find joy. And I want to be in alignment. So I got to follow that joy. I didn't find the joy being a senior transmission engineer. You know, you, you could turn on and restore power to people. You know, you could look at so many transmission drawings and this and that and the third. And you make good money doing those things. I'm not knocking it at all. It was a step to where I wanted to be. It was not the end for me. Even this year is not the end for me. There is no end. But... <clears throat> It is way more rewarding to do something that's tied to touching people's lives. And so way more rewarding than turning on a transmission tower or doing anything technical at any point in my journey. That, that could have, 
never, never about how rewarding my life is for me being that I'm impacting people's lives. And so, so I encourage you, if you have a passion, if you have a calling, and if you're a juicy kind of good, and you know you're helping other people, do that. Do that, because because that, that keeps you in alignment, man. That makes you feel good on those. Some, day, some days, when because I know I ain't got to get up to go to no work, right? right? Some days when I get up and I maybe don't want to maybe mop, or maybe don't want to take out the trash or whatever I had to do that particular day and I'm laying in that bed and I roll over and I grab that phone <laughs> and I read an email. It only takes me to open up one app whether it's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, my emails, my distribution list. If I just read just one, I'm liable to hear something about Somebody being inspired, somebody thanking me for something that I said or did. And that's the thing that'll get me up out that bed, boy. I'll be like, okay, let me go mop. Let me go mop this floor now. Let me go put out this trash now. Cause 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 energy is transferred. So they just gave me a burst of energy to do that thing that I didn't even kind of want to do that day. That that gives me life. That is so rewarding. So I promise you, if you get in alignment. So what you really want to do, and it feels good in your thoughts, it feels good when in your heart, when you when you imagine it, man. When you get there, that's your that's your heaven happily ever after. I know this is mine, and so my happily ever after, man, it might not be like yours, you know, with the mansion and stuff. But I'm a I'm a little I'm a little laid back little lady. I don't need all of the extra stuff. All I need is my peace of mind and feeling good. That's all I really need, feeling comfortable. Like I tell, my, my sister was telling me, because um, I, had, I had went on and did, I didn't share this with TikTok, but I'll share this now that it's over. I've been at Goodyear, Chemical for 20 years, and my time is up too. There you go. You know when your season is up. I didn't share this with nobody, but I um I just got finished working for um UPS. Because I wanted to do something else. And boy, that was a little rough because I was on the pass when I was working for UPS. I was, a sing I was a seasonal worker just because it felt like it was something fun to do. It felt exciting. And it was going to allow me to have a purpose of why I would be in, you know, all around getting to know the area like, right? It felt so fun. It felt like something to do. And I only did it because... I knew it would be fun. I knew I was going to learn about this new city that I uh, live in. And my sister found out, my older sister, who don't have a filter on her mouth, she said to me, now why is you over there? Why is you over there wasting those people's time? And I was like, what do you mean I'm not wasting the time? I'm having fun. Let me have fun with the little job. I'm going to be like delivering stuff. And then I'm going to meet people. And then I can bless people and stuff when I see them and all that. And she was like, you know what? I'm going to call the people. <laughs> I'm going to call HR and I'm going to tell them. I'm going to describe them. I'm going to describe you to them. And I'm going to say they got this little retired little black lady. She look regular, but she ain't regular. She wasted <laughs> She wasted your time. She got money. She don't need a job. Give that job to me. <laughs> but to my core, I'm just a regular little somebody. I want to be that little regular little somebody. No matter, no matter where I go financially, physically, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, I want to just be simple. I want to just be is what I'm saying. I won't be in a box that, oh, because I do da 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 I got to look a certain way and behave a certain way. Cause that means I'm going back in the box and I just came out of a box. I want to be free. I want to have no attachments to no thing. And that's what really another thing that turned me on about working for UPS. I knew it was seasonal, temporary. I knew there was no attachments assigned to that. So I can leave at any time. Matter of fact, not only can I leave, oh, I can actually do not so good and they'll fire me and I don't even care. <laughs> you know? I love that. And I aspire to live my life like that, where I have no attachments. No attachment to the outcome of nothing. That's when you're really free. 
I mean, you think about everything in our life. Everything that we sit there and attach ourselves to. I don't care if it's a job. You attach yourself to a job, but there are some days on that job where you don't want to go there. But you attach to it. Why you why are you attached to it? Because you got to make money. That's what you say. See? You, you, you attach to a husband or a relationship, a boyfriend. And so why are you attached to it? Oh, because, cause, yeah, because I don't want nobody else to have him and her. Or because I love him or her. But that's not love how I see it consciously. Love how I see it consciously is, I love you. I love you. So you're free. Not I love you and now you're going to be my ball and chain. I just don't look at life like that anymore. Once upon a time I did. You know, anything you think of attachment to, signing a contract, attachment. Oh, I'm attached to, to this religion, attachment. So now since I'm attached to this religion, I got to abide by these rules and, and I got to wear this and I got to do this and that. Attachment. I believe that we all should be free. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just being free. Finally, got a chance to be free. Peace and blessings. Oh, my God, I go. Thank you for joining, sweet. Yeah. I'm just living my life free, a free agent. And I suggest you do the same with yours because your life is your own. And so you want to get the utmost out of your life and your experience. People will say or judge you or try to put you in a box. I'd be darned if I'm getting in anybody's box anymore because I've experienced the box. Now I want to experience the boundless universe. Now I want to see how deep this rabbit hole really go. Yeah, outside of the box. Outside of anybody else's thought or idea of me. And so maybe one day you get there. If not, and you decide to stay in your box, that's cool too. But have fun in your box though. You don't let nobody come in your box. And then make you feel some kind of way about being in there. Just as long as you feel good, it really don't matter. But this is what feels good to me. This is what feels good to me. Any more questions out there? Any more topics we need to talk about? I like this little coconut water. I really do. But they got pulp up in here. You see? It say whip pulp. And so I don't like the fact that when you're drinking it, the pulp come rolling in your mouth. But it tastes really good outside of that. I'm going to have to see if they got the kind without pulp next time. Because then I, when I'm drinking it, I try to put my lips a little bit close together so none of it are cold. Go in my mouth. It's kind of weird. Like, don't don't be coming in my mouth all unannounced. I was looking for a juice, and now they got juice in the juice. <laughs> what brand is that? There's a store out here in Arizona called Bosch at the top. You see right there, Bosch at AZ for Arizona. I don't know. It's really really good. It's good coconut water, but it got pulp in it. <laughs> I don't like that. See another one of them got it in my mouth. And it's real meat. It's real coconut meat. <laughs> but don't be don't be just dropping yourself off in my mouth though. I don't like that. So but anyway, I got to the 29th on this phase. And I'm so I'm at the downside where I feel good. I got so many benefits from being on this little 90 day phase. But I can't wait for the 29th to come though. Just because I feel like I already I feel already complete from the phase. I feel like I I detox on a level that I ain't never detoxed before on. All kind of purges was going on over here. So I'm ready for that to be over. That's why I'm still drinking my little coconut waters and stuff. To keep my kidneys, my lymphatic system flowing. But I really want to start making me some um salads again. I, I miss my little salads now. It's just still healthy. I could still do it, but I want to finish out this little juice thing that I got going on. I miss my little salads, though. I really do. That's why I can't wait. That's why I can't wait. I've yet to find a coconut water I like. 
at the Asian markets, though. You got to go to the international markets or Asian markets. That's where they have. They have really good coconut waters. And even check the frozen section, too. So sometimes they be up in there at the Asian market. But back home in Louisiana, it was called Hong Kong. And the frozen section, they had coconut water with the meat. It was like a round ball with the meat in the freezer. And in the inside was the water. And I thought that was pretty cool. And the children, you know, my, my family and everybody, they liked it. But at grocery, grocery stores, a lot of the times they be having other things inside of the, um, the waters. You know, preservatives and stuff. That's what makes the coconut water so nasty. But even if you go to the international store, they got the uh, young coconut in there. The young coconut is going to be the one that has... um. You know how they have the brown, bald, um, bald looking one. But the young coconut oil kind of got the little tree chop, chop um, shape or rooftop shape. And then the coconut shell and it's white. Well, yeah, that one, that's the sweet, good, juicy coconut. You got to take a um, dernier handle to get it open. But that's the best juice. I don't really care for the juices that come up in the brown ones. That kind that you throw for like Mardi Gras and stuff like that. I don't care for those. It be, it be nasty. It be bitter to the tongue. But yeah, that's where they have all the good stuff at. At the international markets. The real good stuff. They have all their vegetables and, and fruits. Be so exotic and so... I had something called green... Pea leaf, I guess it was supposed to be the leaf that's on the green pea tree or something. Man, that, that darn leaf was so rich with magnesium and chlorophyll and so many. It was jam-packed with minerals, so rich to the taste. It was like when you chewed it, it was almost like you were, the juice that was you was conjuring up in your mouth was like liquid chlorophyll, like. I mean the most organic and juicy liquid chlorophyll. It was so rich. And that's why I miss my salad so much. Because it was so rich. And um, I want to make a salad out of it. <laughs> I really do. But I got a cup for about two or three more weeks or whatever to do that. But anyway. Any more questions out there before I wrap this here thing up? Hey, hey. Thank you for joining over there. And God is just be healthy. Any more questions? Anything else? Any more topics? Y'all, y'all creating the life you want. Y'all understand the law of uh, assumption, quantum jumping, and all these just being your thoughts. <laughs> your thoughts create things because you're the God, you're the operating power here. I thank y'all so much. Hey, hey, Yolanda. I thank y'all so much for y'all support. Man, I was so busy yesterday making orders till 1 o'clock in the morning to get that stuff up out of there. Because I like to, you know, pretty much have a 24-hour turnaround where I ship the stuff out. I was up to 1 o'clock this morning. I was in my own little zone just having a good old time. Oh, thank you for joining. I had a good old time listening to music and creating stuff. Y'all got to try. If y'all didn't see me earlier talking about this here, I was, talk, I was talking about it earlier on my live about how I made a mistake and waste on me. Y'all got to try this beard oil. If you have, if I have any men up in here, this is a beard oil and facial nutrition. Not only could you put this on your head, your beard, but you could put this on your skin after you get up out of the shower. I was making this last night. Up until 1 o'clock in the morning because I was completely out and I had a bunch to ship out this morning. And I made a mistake and waste one of these little bottles on the counter and it got on me. It, it got on my skin, like, right? And I put inside of here, man, this stuff smells. Oh, my God. This stuff smells so good. And I put inside of here some essential oils that have an aphrodisiac effect, like, right? Because this is for men's health. What's your intake during your fast? Just a bunch of juices, coconut water, mango juice, spring water. Um, coconut oil is the only thing I digest. Smoothie grape juice. And this week I started doing a smoothie 
but it's mostly liquids. It's only liquids, really, for nine days. But I waste this here on me, and it got all in my hand, and I started feeling some kind of way because it smells so good. I knew what I was doing with this one. So if you have a man in your life, if you are a man, encourage them to look into B Manthe. It is a beard growth oil that is going to leave him smelling so delicious. He going to smell so delicious. So the essential oils that I used in here has aphrodisiac effect. It also, the purpose of it is to stimulate the lymphatic system to be under, to be put on the skin so it can penetrate into the head, the scalp, the beard, or wherever the hair is having a hard time to grow. It's going to, um, it's going to mimic or have the same pH as the skin. It's good for getting rid of dandruff too. Any yeast, any type of um, infections. You know, it's antibacterial. It's an immunity booster. There's a women version of it as well for women. The difference is that the women have different oils for the women's health versus the men's health. That's the difference. But they both are like aphrodisiacs allowing the other sex to kind of like be drawn to you so i created something really really beautiful here i'm really really proud of it it makes the purpose of it is to make or stimulate hair growth it stimulates hair growth but i put it on my skin too like my hair um, my hair grew back already from this already i was having thinning hair i'll talk about that on the last video before i went natural and my hair already grew back so i'm good at this point I just use it to smell good. This is like my like my scent, like my perfume. Like, mm, I love it. So at the bottom of the bottles, they have the um, the fenugreek that I left inside of the men and the women version of it. Fenugreek is one of those herbs that allow your um, hair to grow. And then there's also a proprietary blend of other herbs in here that stimulate hair growth. And essential oils. The carrier oils that I use inside of here is avocado for the vitamin E, and it's good for your skin. It'll be nourishing for your skin as well. And black castor oil, which actually stimulates and allows um, circulation in the body. So when, oftentimes when you're going bald in certain areas or whatever, or you're having skin issues, there's inflammation, there's acidity there. So in order to get rid of that acidity, you got to, allow for circulation and allow for anti-inflammatory things like this here to be put on that area so circulation can begin and if you think about circulation you know <laughs> leading to the needle issues erections you know because that's just a you know a circulation a blood flow issue and so it's allowing your blood to flow getting rid of inflammation and that dandruff allowing your hair to grow back I think this is a beautiful creation. I know that I believe this is beautiful creations. So this is what I was up till one o'clock last night doing. Making um beer oils. Just in my little zone, listening to um music. It was fun too. I was dancing up in here and everything. That's that's just me having fun, me enjoying my patient, my purpose. And prepare myself for all of the orders that be coming in. So I won't have to constantly be going back to the drawing board and, and make one, one or two here and there. I made a whole bunch. <clears throat> I made a whole bunch so I wouldn't have to do that. Because last week that's what I ended up doing. And that way of doing stuff it was tiresome. It was weighing me out. So I dedicated my weekend to just stocking up on everything. So now when I do the orders, I get to ship that stuff and still have time to sit here and talk to you because this is this is why I have time now because if I wouldn't did that I probably would have been making stuff for tomorrow's orders but now I have everything everything ready for tomorrow's orders too so I'm so thankful I'm so thankful see I learned I learned um, all of this attention to detail back in the day when I was in corporate America and giving all my time and energy and my dedication to a job that wasn't really my passion it was somebody else's dream and so now all of those skills that I had, the customer service skills, the attention to detail, the analytical skills, the doing the accounting type work for my business, all of that is in the forefront now for me to do for myself. And I think that is a beautiful thing. Yeah, definitely alopecia. Definitely. That's a hair. 
hair stimulating thing as well. So oftentimes it's 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 the acidity. Like you ever seen people like now I'm not being ugly or funny, but they have people that have hair. I saw this lady, you know how you have those little little bitty curtain irons where you do the little raking for feathers, like right? Well, she had her hair in those little bitty curly amount of curls, but it was like one follicle here, the next one was here. It was real, real, real thin. So when you see that and tying that to alopecia, what's going on there is that skin underneath there, that, that lymphatic system underneath there is full of acids and no circulation going on. Maybe that, that, that needs to be cleared out. It definitely needs to be cleared out with something like that. Castor oil going to help with um, circulation. Now, in conjunction with handling what's going on in the gut, because it starts all in the gut. Matter of fact, going back to us, me saying we're our ancestors, like righting our wrong, so to speak, when our mother... If we're not right in our wrongs, when our mother, for example, gives birth to us, we're kind of like inheriting, inheriting her issues, so to speak. So if mama kidneys ain't filtering and she give um, life to a child, then now she's creating that next cycle of being who going to have a kidney that's not going to filter well because mama created that. It takes the person that be, dares to be different to stop the generational curses, that dare to have a different lifestyle, that dare to begin to detox and everything, like I was saying earlier. So in conjunction to put it on that, if she's at the point with the alopecia, it will be in her best interest for her to do detoxes every six months to a year too, to make sure she's absorbing minerals and things. Because see, our head... Our hair falling out, our sickness and diseases in our head, or even in our feet, if we call it gout, in our chest, if we call it bronchitis type issues, wherever it is, it's all stemming from the gut because the gut is tied to every part of us in our body. And that's where our immunity lies. And so that's our solar plex. In spirituality, you know it to be your solar plex. Solar plex meaning your energy network. So if your energy network cannot absorb and eliminate its waste, then all of these extremities, your phalanges, your, 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 your other parts of yourself ain't going to be up to par either. So it's really important to know that. And so detoxing for alopecia, detoxing for gout, detoxing for high blood pressure, detoxing for diabetes is really, really necessary. That's another thing that was selling a lot too. My, um, the Easter products. I was talking about this earlier. That's why I still sit here. Quit bugging me was one for the parasites and the alchemist oil is another one for, um, parasites for the eggs and the larva. These three products. If you see these these three on my website, these are the ones. This is the beginning stage of it all. You got to put in a, a detox. You got to put in a detox. Now, if you if you just want to go and purchase this gear to help the lymphatic system in the head, yeah, that, that could be a temporary fix for what's right here. But in this area, oh, yeah, it will get the circulation going in this here area. But the start of it all comes in at the gut. So this is normally the start of it all, to start in the gut. Clean the gut. Change the lifestyle by starting with the gut because that's where 80% of the immunity is. But this here will get the circulation going. This will bypass the gut. This will bypass the gut because now you're dealing with the largest organ on the body, the skin. And it has power. It is like the third um, kidney. So you can get around going into the gut by the skin. But what I'm saying is, don't forever ignore the gut because you want to heal the gut. You want the gut to be up to par. So yeah, this here is really, really powerful. It smells so freaking good. I'm so proud of this here. And it, and it, and it works for dandruff too, if I didn't say that. It's really, really good for dandruff, for, um, for bald spots, 
whether it's on the beard or on the scalp or the edges. It's overall good for the skin. It has a lot of vitamin C in it from real citrus type fruit. I need the detox. Yeah, it's a 30 day detox. It's called Sustain Detox. It's full of iron, delivering oxygen to the blood. I chose um, sarsaparilla root for that, which is the most powerful form of iron there is because I once, I once uh, was anemic and needed a lot of iron. Is diatomaceous earth good? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Best kept. But diatomaceous earth is good where it's going to get rid of um, the large, the large worms, the large parasites. It's like a large parasite detox, like right? Diatomaceous earth is actually in the product called, um, quit bugging me. That's included in there too. So yeah, it's going to take care of the large parasites. But keep in mind that parasites in, 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 in all that live in your intestines, they go through life cycles. And so since they're going through life cycles, they, they secrete larva, they lay eggs, especially for you trying to kill them. So that's why I would recommend for a parasite cleanse to get the quit bugging me. Quit bugging me, is, which is going to help with the large parasites, but get the alchemist oil, which looks like this here on my website. And it's going to help with the eggs and the larva. So you got the eggs, larva, large uh, uh, worms, not everything getting taken care of. Everything gone, and that's called quit bugging me and the alchemist oil. But yes, back to your initial question, diatomaceous earth is really good, and it works by suffocating the parasites. So you have to, you have to stay hydrated when you drink it. I mean, digesting diatomaceous earth, and be careful with inhaling it too, because being that it suffocates the parasite, inhaling it while you're trying to mix the powder into the water inhaling the you know the powder if it gets inside of like your nostrils or whatever you know it can really cause damage because it, it can expand in there and cause you not to be able to breathe so be careful not to be sitting there breathing in it not to be so close when you're mixing it with the water and hurry up and mix it within the water and consume it once it's dissolved inside of the liquid and then swallow but make sure you drink a whole lot of water after that. Because I would suggest that you would do something like a sustained detox to unclog all of your outlets first. That means the sustained detox is going to deliver oxygen to the cells of your body because it's a cellular detox. It's going to open up that lymph pathways. It's going to open up them kidneys. It's going to open up them bowels and things going to be coming through, you know, bowel movements. And a lot of urine gonna be coming out. You want to make sure your pathways are open before you start on a detox that's dehydrating parasites because you will feel like crap if the worms start dying inside of you and you ain't having a bowel movement. Oh my god, that die off effect is gonna really affect you if you're not having bowel movement. So it's good to start off with sustained detox or something that's going to make you go to the bathroom, number one and number two, so that it's purging your body first. You got to know that you ain't clogged up because that's a horrible feeling because if when the when parasites and stuff like that start to die off when they're inside of you and they can't come out of your bowel movement or your waist with your urine, they're going to start coming out of your ears. They're going to start coming out of your nose. They're going to start coming out of your skin. Because your skin is like another kidney. They're going to start coming out of your eye. You know, you're going to have pus and stuff coming out of your eye and stuff. Oh, a lot of my nose itching. Just think about that. I don't want to talk about that no more. But you got the point. <laughs> you make sure you're doing number one and number two. Because you don't want them just jumping out saying, surprise. <laughs> surprise. No, 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 no. No surprise. And you don't want to feel... <laughs> You don't want to feel full of worms or stuff because trust and believe we all have a level at some point in our life of some type of parasites, even vegans, you know, you know, and we all have some level of bacteria, you know, you got the good and bad bacteria. We all have some type of mucus because we got mucus membranes and then we got, which we're supposed to have. And then we got excess mucus from maybe 
you know, daily drinking or whatever. We all have a certain level of it. So, not to say that anybody, no one body is better than the other. Some people just don't have the beneficial, enough of beneficial bacteria or a cleaner diet to outweigh the bad guys, to outnumber the bad guys. That's all I'm saying here. Most people have parasites. Yeah, there you go. Most people do. Yep, Frederick. Yeah, most people do. And especially if, um, especially if you have, how do we know? Key, how do we know? Well, right now, if you sitting down and you clenching on in your booty cheeks, <laughs> that's a good sign. That's a good way to know. When you hawking up a lot of mucus, that's a good way to know. When you maybe have rosacea, you people that have that rosacea, oh yeah, they got them. Because that's all that that is. That's little, little eggs and stuff. Little... <laughs> I'm not trying to be ugly. But that's little eggs and stuff in their little cheeks, on their little face, you know. Um, people that have eczema, yeah. Because it's trying to come through. It's trying to come out. It's trying to come out of one of your um, elimination pathways, which is your skin, which is like a third kidney. So, yeah. So, a lot of people that eat bloody steaks or whatever, you know, when um, when you feel like crawling sensations in your stomach too, not just in your booty, you will feel it. You, um, if you eat bloody steaks, probably, you know, raw sushi, a lot of those people have it. Not judging them, it just is what it is. Cat, if you live with cats and dogs and stuff, you know, dogs and cats, they, they getting, for the dogs, they getting dewormed and stuff, you know, they have worms, you know, rabies shots and stuff. And so if they're in your environment, of course, they're leaving little eggs and larvae, they leaving little, little things that you can't see because it's microscopic, you know. So, yeah. Hello, what type of detox do you recommend? Hey, Pamela, I recommend my sustained detox to get started, to open up the pathways, to make sure you're getting rid of old fecal matter and you're getting oxygen delivered. You're getting all the minerals that you need at the same time so it ain't going to weigh you out. It ain't going to have you, you know, with a bad die-off effect because it's getting rid of the bulk. It's like sustained detox it goes in and gather old fecal matter and stuff. And at the same time, it's leaving you with the highest form of, of iron in your body, with the highest form of magnesium in your body. So it's sustaining you and keeping you. It looks like this on the website. It's sustaining you and keeping you with the minerals that you need for your body. And so no detox going to work for no one week. If you got a detox that's 24-hour detox, uh, you ain't do nothing. You ain't get rid of no worm, no parasite. You just had a good bowel movement. Even the ones that's two weeks. No, mm -mm, you need to be on a detox for like 30 days at least. Because just thinking about parasites, they have life cycles. You know, so if a parasite have life cycle and it's laying eggs and it's doing this larva thing and it might grow into an adult. If it's adult and you try to fool with it, it's going to start laying eggs. It's going to start trying to reproduce so that, you know, the babies could wild out <laughs> in the next lifetime, so to speak. So it takes time to penetrate and clean a clear all the way up all them eggs and stuff. So no little one, two week phase. I mean, one or two weeks detox is going to do that. Even for me, like I can share with y'all, even for me, I've been on a darn 90 day detox and I've been experiencing some things that's coming out of me. So when I was eating, I don't have a big appetite. I eat like a bird, y'all. And I only eat like once a day. So I would like for the, for a day on my normal diet, I'll be eating around noon or one or two in the evening when the sun is out so it can help me digest my food. And it probably was maybe a salad, you know, a loaded salad with all kind of good for me things on this salad, right? And I'm drinking my water. I don't drink no soft drinks. I don't fool around. I don't like sugar. Sugar give me a zinc, a brain zap to my head. It don't resonate with my body. I don't eat none of that so-called unclean stuff. Not to be holier than now. I just don't like the darn stuff. That's how I program my subconscious mind. Don't judge me for how I program my mind. I like to have energy after I eat. I don't like to be tired after I eat. But even for me, not eating and just drinking neat fruit juices... I've been experiencing things where my urine got darker. I've seen the darkness in my urine. I've seen the so-called sediments that I'm telling you about when I talk about lymphatic cleaning, cleaning. I can see sediments settling at the bottom of the toilet when I look back at my urine. 
I was on sustained detox for two weeks because I'm not eating. That's why I only went to two weeks. And plus, because I do sustain on regular already. So I only needed the two week time frame for sustain. And I was putting it together with my alchemist oil. And my bowels, I was seeing a little action too. So what I'm saying to you is <laughs> eating, you're putting stuff in your stomach. And, 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 and I was putting clean stuff in my stomach, stomach at that time. Not eating, I wasn't putting any foods in my stomach. I was only drinking. And so that gave and cleared up my immune system, 80% of my immune system since I wasn't eating anything. Then it was clean house and it was getting rid of the, you know, the old fecal stuff and all of the fats and everything else that, that was still hanging on behind. And when I started putting sustained detox with not eating, I was releasing mucus and stuff out of me. And I'm like, well, what is this? I thought I was like clean, squeaky, Mr. T kind of clean. I'm telling you, there are so many levels. I experienced another level that I have never experienced in my life while being on this 90-day detox. And so in, a, in a conjunction with just drinking and only consuming my coconut oil, because that's the only thing that helped me with my appetite, get my amino acids. Besides that, I was only using my organic products on my skin, being that I understand that the skin is the largest organ and what I put on it penetrates inside of it. So I was only using my organic products, which also have herbs in them, also have citrus fruit in them, also are organic and they're high in magnesium for my body for being on this fast. I was brushing my teeth with um, Bob Red Mill um, baking soda to keep the alkalinity of my saliva, you know, I was uh, gargling with my water pick. I will put two drops of my alchemist oil in it to gargle and squish and clean my gums after I brush my teeth. So the alchemist oil, that's made of clove and oregano, clove being the world's most powerful antioxidant, and oregano mixed together. And that gave me that um, fresh breath type smell like um, a mouthwash type smell and it was taking care of the integrity of my gum. I was only putting my shampoo on my head. I mean, I was doing the third thing. And for me, I was just shocked. I think I must have been a little overconfident because I was just shocked that, wait, why is my urine darker? Why am I getting sediment? Why am I feeling this at a different level? Why is my bowel, you know, getting rid of stuff? I, I thought I was done with all of the stuff, but I wasn't. I'm telling y'all, there's levels. There's levels. And ooh, in the beginning, and I did a video of this. In the beginning of this fast, I felt my lymphatic system draining, like from my head. You could feel, well, I can feel because I'm in tune with myself. You could feel you just drain. I could feel it like going down my back. It was the most eerie ticklish feeling I had ever experienced and I knew I was purging at a different level and I, I mentioned it on one of my videos on God is just be healthy I was like y'all I'm talking and it feels a little ticklish because I can literally feel my lymphatic right here is where I felt it I will feel it right here draining I don't know what that was all about but man when I looked at my urine after I would urinate I'm like well I'm glad it's out of here I'm glad it's going away whatever it was Maybe some old uric acid, lactic acid, some old fat, some old mucus. I don't know. But better out than in, eh? <laughs> yeah. But that's how you know. You, you start to itch. You start to get fatigued. You start to get, you know, samples of skin not being up to par. You start to get upset stomach issues. You start to have bo foul bowel movement. Your booty hole starts to itch. Um, stuff like that. That's how you know. <laughs> Thank you. I know, right? I already have a dog. Wait, <laughs> I just, you just made me not want to have any pets. Well, well, wait, let me tell you. I had a little toy poodle back in New Orleans, Louisiana. When I found out about all of this here stuff, see, that's what one thing. Once you learn, you it can't go back. When I found out about all this stuff, man, I was like, this dog got to get up out of here. And he was. <laughs> He was just a little bitty dog. <laughs> I was just looking at him like, ah, don't come over here. Don't come over here with your little parents. <laughs> <laughs> but 
don't come over here. Don't come over here. But you, I had love for him. I had love for him so much. I ended up giving that my dog to uh, my brother. And my brother had the dog up in the dirt. He was a truck driver. And he had the dog on the dog up in the cage all day while he riding around in town all for damn near 10, I mean 12, 14 hours a day on the truck. And I found out the dog wasn't having a life. So I ended up biting my tongue and letting the dog back. But I don't have no dogs here, though. I don't have no dogs here. I know too much. I don't, I'm not going to ever have a dog or a cat because of what I know. And because it'll make me, you know, this is how I programmed it. All. And I, and I kind of like this here program of eating fresh and being clean, so to speak. <laughs> and I don't want to go back to that. I love animals, though. I really do. I don't have no problem with touching them and all that. But living in the house, knowing that little, knowing what I know about life cycles of parasites and everything, no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. But my neighbors have dogs and stuff, and I'll take their dogs and I'll bring them to the park and everything. And that'd be my experience with dogs. What about a cat? It's the same difference. Yeah, they transfer. They transfer all of their toxicity. They, you know, they, they little kitty litter stuff. It, I mean, it's microscopic, so wherever that little kitty litter area is, they they have a whole kind of little secretions and things going on. I mean, they're animals. They were really never meant to be, like, in our homes like that. You know, back in the day, um, we taught others how to be cleaner and separate the living arrangements of being with animals. You know? And so now we're at the part in our journey where we're welcoming them in our home, which is nothing wrong with that. I just, I love them, but I don't see me having one in my home ever again now that I know about this here. And it's not me, you know, being fearful or limited thinking. It's just me wanting to be comfortable and just be and don't have to worry about that thing no more. But yeah, they lay stuff, man. So, actually, going back to what this person said over here, the diatomaceous earth is really, really good for um, for humans. It'll destroy the um, parasites by dehydrating them. But you could also get, you could also, believe it or not, that's another use for quick bugging me. If you purchase Quit Bugging Me and you have a pet, it is pet friendly and it is inclusive of diatomaceous earth. So you can put that on your carpet where you like to have the dog and the cat while and out at and the microscopic eggs and stuff will suffocate from that powder that's inside of Quit Bugging Me. You can put it on that sofa or whatever to ease your mind of that where you let the dog or the cat just hop up on. I mean, just as long as you're doing something that's going to irrigate or better yet eliminate that issue but that issue is happening is happening because that they carry that they carry worms them cats and stuff i had a cat for nine days for nine days and i had to get rid of the cat and that was because of no parasites or anything i bought a cat and her name was melanin and i was so proud of little melanin i brought her home and she was the most beautiful black cat oh my God, she was beautiful. But she was a baby and she had diarrhea. And at that was the time I was still working. And I came home from work and that thing had, I don't know, poop all over the wall. I had left up in a toilet room in my bathroom because my toilet room in that house was separate from the bathroom. So I would shut the door of the toilet room. The, the paw prints was all on the wall with poop. And I, I don't know how I, he, she had diarrhea. But I wasn't about to go through the phase of her getting rid of the diarrhea because I had just knew too much. <laughs> and I was like, Melanin, baby, I'm going to have to see you next lifetime, baby, because um, I know they're well. They got some kind of parasites and poop all over the place up in here. And I'm going to have to bleach this room and I'm going to have to paint and everything, but you're going to have to get up out of here. And I brought her back to that animal shelter. And, um, and I said, peace. 
I was doing beats because um, you know, I was I was caught up into this moment because at this moment I was reading about the Egyptians and about bass, the cat and all of this, and I was like, Oh, I want a cat because spiritually the cat frequency, the purr, you know, I get caught up into my little religious I mean my little um spiritual stuff, right? And I was like, so spiritually these cats the purring of the cat could actually heal you based upon the frequency and the Egyptians had the cats and the cats keep away all the little evil spirits and serpents and, and they're really like guardians and da 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 girl when that darn cat pooped up in that bathroom I was like I don't give a damn what kind of superpower you have your ace is about to get up out of here and I brought him back and now now I can't my name is on the list where I can't adopt no animals no more. But I'm good with that. I'm good. <laughs> because I bought it back at the animal shelter. And so now I can't adopt. But I'm okay. I don't think I want to adopt no more in this lifetime. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I can't do it. <laughs> they don't trust me with the animals. Yeah, get some sage. Yeah, I know, right? I know, right? Yeah, get some sage up in here. I sage, I sage. I bleach out fabuloso, even though I even talk about how toxic fabuloso is. But guess what? We need some toxicity up in that bedroom. <laughs> we, need, we need some toxic fabuloso. And some 100% Clorox bleach up in that thing. Because that's just nasty. I can't I can't do nasty. <laughs> I can't do nasty, so I don't do pets. But Diatomaceous Earth is really, really good for the pets too. And so they actually like it because they know that it is um it helps to deworm them. So if they have worms, Diatomaceous Earth is good for that. And if if they have worms inside, it's good for that to give them and also if they done left eggs in your coffin and your sofa and stuff that you can't see it's good so put that down and then you could just vacuum it up because that that the powder is going to dehydrate all of them eggs and them parasites that you can't see in your house see that i'm even helping y'all with y'all pets <laughs> oh you back big t you back huh yeah did you really repaint the wall? Yeah, I repaint the walls. I could paint really good. I sure did. As a matter of fact, <laughs> once, once I started <laughs> once I started painting the wall of the bathroom, it was a pretty little eggshell color that I used. I got excited about painting. I ended up painting damn near the whole house because you know. My germaphobic type energy picked up, and I was thinking, well, maybe, maybe the parasite will be here too. <laughs> so I just got on the painting journey <laughs> and just started painting everything. Yeah, yeah, thank you. The same as using gardens. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. But I really did repaint because um, I was just thinking about that, and I wanted everything to be freshly bleached. I don't like dirty and nasty. I just can't do that. And the idea of that thought, and I know my thoughts, my thoughts give life to stuff. So if I'm sitting there thinking about something, just like how I was talking, and I was like, oh, I need to stop um, talking about that because I know my power of my thoughts. And so once you become conscious, like you kind of like instantly can manifest things. So when I think too much on things, I try to get up out of there before I do them create something that I didn't want to create but yeah I went on a painting spree and I got rid of that little cat and I, I can't I can't adopt no more and I'm good with that I'm good but anyway anything else <laughs> you say, oh my god I sure did but it, it came out nice if I had some pictures I'll show you I did really good in that house because I was preparing that house to get um Airbnb out because I um you know, I wanted to get some action with Airbnb anyway, so I was like, you know what, I'm going I'm to paint. I'm going to paint the whole thing, make sure everything's nice and fresh, you know. Because what if, you know, because sometimes like when you had, granted, I only had the cat for nine days, but sometimes when you have those animals and stuff, then 
your house begins to smell like an animal and the people that live in the house, they get immune to that particular smell. And so when company come over now, they're like, as soon as they walk in the door, they're like, oh, I can tell that person has a dog or a cat or whatever, especially that among the pee-pee that them, them cats secrete. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it a fresh smell because I wanted my house to be really fresh for when I airbnb would it out. Yeah, some people's house smell like that. And they'd be sitting up in there looking like what? And you're looking at them like, oh, you must don't smell that. Bless your little heart. So I don't want my house. Well, I didn't want that house to smell like that. And I know this one don't smell like nothing because I don't have no, you know, cats and dogs up in here. And it's, if anything, it smells like fresh wood and, you know, fresh paint because this is more of a new construction. So, I, I don't like that idea. Cleanliness is next to godliness. And I'm not saying that to quote any biblical uh, scripture, but it really is. It's like cleanliness of your mind, clean, cleanliness of your environment. Because, like, you talk, we talk about sage and the home and everything, but having things in decency and in order allows for good flow of energy. For when you're chaotic with your thoughts or depressed people, for example, if you notice, they'll begin to want to close the blinds and be in the darkness and things will be at an uproar or disorganized because their thoughts are chaotic. They are unorganized in the way of thinking and at the frequency that they are. And so that expands to smells for me too, you know. That's why I love, you know, creating products and stuff that have certain scents. Because certain scents can take you also on another trip spiritually to other realms, other memories, or other thought patterns. And so it all ties into being next to God, cleanliness being next to God, energetically. Yeah. Could someone send a clutter spell to you? That's an interest. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. That's an interesting question. And I would answer that to say to you, yeah, yeah, if you believe, if you believe, like you could believe that I said right now in the company of all these other people that are on this live, you could believe energetically that I'm sending a spell to you right now. And whatever type of spell I'm sending to you right now, if you think about it after we get off this live, and you hold it true, and you make it a belief, being that you're thinking about it over and over, it's a thought that you're having over and over, and now it's become, over and over, and now it's becoming a law in your subconscious mind. And that's what a belief really is. It's just a thought that you've had over and over, and now you believe that. Now it's a law for you. And so now, since you believe that in your subconscious mind, now you're doing certain things, or saying certain things like, Oh, when I was on that live with that lady with that pink sweater on, she said the spell over here. And now since she spit that spell over here, it's making me be cluttered for cluttered person. And now, you know what? In about five years, I might be one of those little pack rats. You know, I might be a harder. Oh, because of that lady with that pink sweater. So now you're giving more energy to that thought or that belief now. And so it's growing and growing. And it's real. It's real to you. But meanwhile, the lady with the pink sweater didn't do nothing to you. The pink lady with the pink sweater really wanted just to see you organized. But in your mind, you think she sent you a spell that made you become a clutter. Because you're the upper power. That's how, the, how all of them so-called spells and witch work really happen. Like, Because if you think about it, how do the people know that the witch... Or the person put a root on them or sent them something. Did the witch worker say that? Where did they get the message? Like people send, do spells on me and then they come see, guess what? I did a spell on you. Where do they get that from? They believe that. They think that. And that's the law. I say thought. And that's man thinking so too. And so now really they give the power to that rich, rich, rich lady. Witch lady. But if she tells you that, like if somebody was to tell me that, that they had something, something on me or whatever, well, 
because of where I am in my journey, because I've already been through that state of being with the witches type energy, because I went down that rabbit hole to see what the heck the black or the dark magic was all about, so I could learn, because I don't want to be green about no aspect of my life being God in physical form. And I'd be like, oh yeah? And I'd just smile at them, knowing in my mind, okay, well guess what, I covered that already, because I have a return to spit the sender in order for anybody that tried to do anything to me. Nothing shall by no means harm me. So I'd be like, oh, okay, well, good luck in my mind. You know, I ain't got nothing to say out loud because see, 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 confidence is silent. I'd be like, oh, okay, you did. But in my mind, I'd be like, well, good luck with that. May the best God win. <laughs> in my mind, like, oh, okay, you did. Okay, well, guess what? It's about to come back to you. So you make sure you cover all the, your 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 pathways. You you cross all your T's. You dot all your I's. So if you're gonna go down that portal of thinking that people can do something to you, cover yourself. That's what they did in religion. They covered themselves with the blood of Jesus. Didn't they? Then we used to do that. Oh, because I remember when I was in church. When I was in church, we used to say I used to say this at the end of my prayer. I send the angels Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and St. Clair with their swords dipped in the blood to cut asunder any spirit that is contrary to the word of the will of God in this particular area. See, I was covering myself, right? <laughs> I'm glad you say that. That's what I was thinking. So I was covering myself. So now I'm in spirituality. Well, I don't particularly call on no Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, or Gabriel, Raphael, St. Clair no more. Nah. I just imagine that there is the law that I believe in, the one that, and nothing shall by any means harm me. So I cover that by putting a return to sender on any thought or any outside entity that will try to me. Return to sender. Return to sender. And I, I learned that. By covering myself, about covering myself, when I was reading this book, it was called Spiritual Conjuring for Witches. I was I was learning about the so-called devil. I was learning about dark entities and, and deities and conjuring up other spirits and stuff. I was just wanted to study just to, just to know, just to know what, what that was all about. And so in reading that book, it, it went back to everything being thought, everything being intent. And so I was like, okay. Well, since it's thought, if it's intent, because it was teaching you how to go in different portals, and when you go in the portal, you put you protect yourself by going in because you wanted to come out of this portal, or when you was in, in invoking an energy or something like right, like for example, the goddess of Shun. If you're trying to, you know, suck at the altar or conjure up the energy of the goddess of Shun, then you wanted to do a circle. It's like an imaginary circle where you're going in the por this portal and you're conjuring up this spirit or you're calling up this spirit. But you had to leave at the circle like a, a protector. And there you could have called upon your angel, Michael, Gabriel, St. Clair, Raphael, whoever, whatever. But I used from spirituality at that point, Michael, because I had already been using that energy and that energy had already got powerful for me. But then, in my, when I started learning about uh, dark magic and spells and stuff, I just wrote a standing spell to return to sender. Because I was never in any aspect or any part of my journey. I was never trying to, um, you know, like do really dark healing magic or send nobody sickness and all that. I ain't got time for that. I was trying to get to know myself. I just wanted to know. But I will write down a return to sender on anyone who will try to to me um, the internet, you know, on these social media platforms, you know, they become the evil energy and, and trying to, you know, do stuff while you're on the live and all that. I just write it down like anything that somebody tries to do to me or to bring harm or vex my spirit, I return to sender tenfold. You know, and then I would, I would write that down in my trust words because you can't get it wrong. You got them, you'll, you'll keep them. I would write that down and I would fold the paper away from me like as if I'm returning it to sender. 
I fold it away from me this way. Then when it get now, I fold it away from me this new way. And turn to some Lord. And I'll do certain things with my with, with the wo- spoken words. Because remember, when you're spelling, you are casting spells. But you're casting this spell on your mental for you to believe this. So it could be your law for your land to govern your land, so to speak. Now, with this said spell, you have an option to, to bury the spell. If you're going to put it in the, under the ground and let Mother Nature take care of it, you could burn it. <laughs> you, could, you could put it in some water. <laughs> you could put it in some water in a Ziploc bag and you could freeze it. It's if you're binding the words to that water that it can't, you know, that, that it, it has to be that way. It's bound together, so to speak. You could keep that in, in a frozen, in your freezer somewhere, wherever you put it. You could flush it down the toilet and just say, hey, my spoken word is that it's your return to sender. You could imagine flushing it down the toilet and that being the loop way to get it back to the sender. I don't know. It's your mind. It's your thoughts. But that's how I did my law. That no, no, you can't mess with me and my kingdom. I'm going to send it back to you. And then, and then you going to know, you going to know who you fooling with over here. So once you learn that part of the journey too, you ain't got to worry about all of that. You just believe in your law. You believe in your your God and your kingdom. Ain't nobody can mess with you. Ten times ten, I big tea. Yeah. And so I, I do stuff like that. Well, I've done stuff like that. And my law still resides in my kingdom. As long as I'm living in this particular avatar, my law still resides. So, so get you a law. Get you a law and can't nobody mess with you. All that who do and voodoo. What do you do? What do you say? Who do you say I am? What do you believe? You believe that you're the operant power or you got somebody in your kingdom that has greater power than you? <laughs> to send you stuff. To do stuff to you. No, it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be like that. <laughs> I think that's a beautiful question because I got to get a lot of people... You know, just at different places in their journey where they really give energy or they give belief to those things. That if you give more belief to your law and your power, all of them other things will die out. They'll die out because they'll lose their power. They'll lose their power and their strength. Stop giving people power over you, situation power over you. Mm-mm. It don't work like that. It shouldn't be working like that because that means you don't got off the throne. Like what, 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 what the so-called God, like the so-called Jesus look like coming forth, if you believe in the physical aspect of it, coming forth down these so-called pearly, um, the out the pearly gates down the stairs, being powerless, saying, man, I used to be Jesus, but this person over here did a spell on me. And now I can't be Jesus no more because, man, I lost my mojo. I lost my it factor, man. I be wanting to do miracles and stuff. You know, I be wanting to turn water and some wine, but they put a spell on me. And now I only could do the two-step or whatever. Like, you'd be like, huh? What the hell? Jesus, what the hell wrong with you? Jesus, <laughs> why don't you look Christ conscious now? Haven't you resurrected? So just think about those things. <clears throat> in the Christ, in the biblical text, it said, "You didn't take my life. I laid it down." And if I can lay it down, that means I can pick it back up again. Because you laid down the idea that you <laughs> didn't have the power. Just pick that thing back up again. Because life is happening through you. You got the power. You got the juice. You're the only one that got the juice. <laughs> so anything else? Anything else? Any other questions? If not, I'm going to wrap it up. If not, I'm going to wrap it up. Let's see. Bestie, how do you 
with that same mind power to heal self? That's a beautiful question. How do you use that same mind power to heal self? You look at self as already being healed. You be, you get to know self. You edify the church. And when I say that, it's like you get to know self on a cellular level. You get to appreciate self. You get to love on self. You, you, you look in a mirror in your bathroom and you eyeball to eyeball with self. Saying, I know that you're powerful. I know that you're great. I love you so much. You tell self how much you love it. You give self the nourishment and be easy with self. You allow self to, to, to heal all chakra points of energy and let go of all grief and all hate and, and anger and, and, and pain and trauma. Because really that's when all the healing begins. That's when life begins. When you remove your mind and let the old mind die away. And so in healing self, you're being good to self. You're not judging self no more. You're appreciating that part of your body and yourself that you ain't never appreciated or showing appreciation to. Like for me, when I tell you all that I talk to myself or I can heal myself at a cellular level by the things that I eat, don't think that I don't sit there and, 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 and admire that part of me talk to that part of me don't think that when i tell you all that i'm talking to myself don't think that i'm just saying hey girl yeah how you doing today da, da, da. no 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 i check in hey lover oh i appreciate you so much baby you and me become that baby i appreciate you at a cellular level adam every atom every molecule every particle every blood every gallstone that you allow to Everything you do to filter you to keep you alive, every bit of blood that is flowing through you, every bit of magnesium, every bit of oxygen in your body, I show my appreciation to you. I thank you. I thank you for turning over and creating new life inside of me. And I close my eyes when I do this, and I and I imagine I put my energy, my focus on that part of my body. My liver, this is my time to love self because in loving self, I'm healing self because love heals all. And then I check in, hello, fitness. I'm so happy I have both of you. Man, you've been working a lot today, a lot in the last few months because I've really been deeply cleaning you. I've really been going on this fast to really help you out because I love you so much. I've been giving you everything that you need. I've been giving you the coconut oil because I know that that's going to increase the alkalinity and it's going to help you help me heal to my body. I've been giving you coconut oil because I know you're worthy. And I'm thankful for how you came in my body. I love you so much. I thank you so much for giving me the notion when I have to go to the restroom and urinate. I thank you so much for filtering my blood, being a backup for my blood. You know, it's, it feels so good to have backup. You're a perfect backup. Oh, blood, I feel you. I know that you have oxygen being delivered inside you because I'm wide awoke in my physical reality. <laughs> I know that my blood has been renewed, and I'm so thankful that I am being encouraged right now. Oh, I can feel myself being encouraged right now to where I'm that Anunnaki blood type, the old blood type. I can feel it because, you know, when I'm sleeping and I go into the quantum field and, I, and I, I'm, I'm in different realms and different dimensions and, and I believe it, it is a field that only the gods in this physical reality are able to explore. Oh, Stan, I'm thankful for you. Because video after video, I think of you from when you had marks on you and you are now glowing skin. And skin says, I know that you are a backup for my kidneys. I'm thankful for you, too, and giving me the message. I'm thankful that you can hear me when I send the message that I love you and that I want the best for you and that I want you to glow and I want you to be the best version of yourself and I want you to shine and bright and I want you to have an aura about yourself that people who begin to ask you, oh, what are you doing with your skin? And really, the truly, the answer would be that, oh, oh, 
she's just laughing at me. She's talking to me because she understands that all things are energy, frequency, and vibration. And she is talking to the cells of our body because she knows that they all lie. And she knows by talking to them that conjures up energy, that conjures up love, that she's loved. And she loves everything about herself. She loves her inside of herself. She sits here and she talks to her blood, you know. She sits here and talks to her organs, you know. She sits here and talks to her subconscious mind. She sits here and talks to all things because she understands that all things are alive. Even the water she drinks, even the food she eats, she's talking to them. Religious people talk to them too when they call themselves blessed in their food. But she talks to them on a different level. She tells them what she wants them to do before she even digests them. She tells them how grateful she is for it because she understands that love, love heals all. And that all things are vibrating at a frequency of energy. Some things are moving faster, some things are moving slow, but she knows that all of this is just energy. And when she wants to manipulate the energy of any said thing, she becomes that thing. <laughs> yeah, she becomes that thing. She becomes part of that level. She becomes part of that blood. She becomes part of that energetic molecule, that particle. And she just loves on it. And that's how she heals herself. Because she loves every part of herself. Not physical. We ain't talking about no physical. She loves every part of herself. All the way down to the atom. The atom of self. She loves that atom of self. So that's what I'm talking about. Ooh, I, I enjoyed that. I'm sorry. I kind of got it. Got caught up. <laughs> I forgot I was talking to two platforms. When I opened my eyes, I remembered again. But you get so juicy and, and so, so, so deeply rooted into that thing. And you become that you love on that thing. Whatever that part of yourself that may be experiencing dis-ease, talk to it. I did a consultation and I can't tell what they were t talking about, but I'll tell you what I told them. There was a person who had a chakra full of energy, the sacral chakra, that was out of balance and I told them, talk to that thing. And it was out of balance merely because they had been molested at one point in their life and I was like, baby, come on, let's talk to that thing. Let's talk to that thing and let's tell that thing I'm sorry sorry for all that you went through for all that's been painful that day but I'm here to protect you now I'm sorry since that situation happened that I, I didn't allow you to ever have sex with me I'm sorry that I just called myself protecting you but I just turned you completely off and, I, and you lost balance with yourself but I'm here to be your savior and I'm here to give you that balance once again and so now it's okay for you to express your creativity. Well, you don't have to have sex if you don't want to, but that's still your sacred energy. That's where you have your creative abilities. That's where they all stem from. So you're free now to be creative. And, and life still happens through you. We can still be creative together. We can still express that sexual energy in other form. We can still transform that energy somehow. I know you're alive. And, and though you may not want to act as if you hear me, I know you can hear me. Because you are an atom. You, you are a cell. You are a cell that is helping to keep me alive. And so I begin to teach her how to talk to that part of your body that is experiencing this ease. Because this is part of getting to know self and the love self. It's a beautiful day when you really can get juicy with it in you and use your heart and your human imagination. This is how you energetically can heal yourself. You really can. Just by spoken word. That's how powerful. That's how cold you are with your superpowers. Just get in there. Get in there and talk. I don't care if we're talking to a breast that potentially have a lump in it. You talk to that thing and be like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that you're going through this right now. But at this very moment, I can feel that tumor or that cyst or whatever being released right now. I can feel it, especially with the things that I'm putting inside of my body because I'm showing love to my body by giving you the things that you need to secrete that extra mucus inside of there, to return back to your alkaline state of being, to release those acids for you. I know, I know. But since I know that I created it and I know that I'm proud, I know I'm the only one that can be proud. I'm the only one that can destroy.
sure that to me right now with my spoken word, I'm just throwing that to you. It's just all of them right now. Doesn't it feel good to release that? Doesn't it feel good to re to dissolve that? Oh, you're perfect again. I see you perfect. I see you whole. This is what the Christ consciousness was, one was doing in the biblical text. It was seeing people whole already. Oh, you have a, You thought you had an issue of blood? No, your blood has been renewed. You thought you was blind? Wait, hold up. Let me spit on this little clay. Let me rub this on your eye because, baby, I'm going to see you whole already. <laughs> but it's only by your faith, your ability to remain focused. And this is where that controlled imagination that I was talking about earlier comes to play. Your ability to remain focused on that thing and be in the body with that thing. That's how you heal that thing. Because you are that thing. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful. Thank you for that question. That was beautiful. Thank you for that question. That was Romans 12 too. I'm not religious, but I know those scriptures. Truly have power within them. Yeah, me either. I'm not religious either, but I remember them scriptures as well. Do not conform to the power of this world, but be transferred by the renewing of your mind. There you go, babe. You, you know this thing already. You know this thing already, Nanita. Yeah, hey, Urban. You know this thing already. And that's how you use the power. That's how you use the power to heal yourself. You're using your power. You're using the power of your human imagination and that of your heart that I was talking about earlier. You're using your power, your electric and your magnetic, your masculine and your feminine. You're putting them together and you're creating an electromagnetic field of energy. And together, that heals you. It heals you. Most of the time we give that, in, that, that power to other people. Though. But just spend time focused, your ability to focus on self. <laughs> will heal yourself and when i said that i thought about this song they have this song i, I forget who played who played this song but i think about this song spiritually all the time i don't know how to sing but i'm about to bust a, bust a lyric for you so you you know this song it says a verse and it says can you focus on me baby can you focus something like that on me and it's like when i think about this here song i'm like yes that's key to it all can you focus on me? See, see, we get we get confused with all of these things, all of this turbulence, all of these things that's going on outside, outside of ourselves. This is the illusion, though. But baby, can you focus? Can you focus on me long enough to heal me? <laughs> because me is, is 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 in dire need of healing. We didn't gave our energy to the man, to the job, you know, to the to the money, to to, to the religion, to to all of these things out there, but. When our body gets at this ease and disharmony, that song always comes to my mind. And I say, can you focus on me? Baby, can you focus? I love that song. She's, I think she's talking about a man or something, but I'm talking about you, of course. <laughs> so that's what you do. You focus on you. I'm reading this. Yeah. A-W. Her. Yeah. Her sings that song. Use your words to heal you. Yeah. Can you focus on me? And, and sometimes I, that, that could be that could be a song. Even, you know, there's so many different ways to meditate. That could be a song or a way you focus. You could use music to focus because music has the energetic frequency about itself too. And it'll get you in alignment. This is why in church, you know, when we was joking to them church songs, boy, we was catching that so-called Holy Ghost. Yeah, because we were in alignment. That noise, that frequency was putting us in alignment and making us feel good no matter what our so-called trials and tribulations were. So sometimes you could just use a certain song that just gets you there that makes you feel good. And that's one of the songs for me where I have it on my playlist, but I don't be looking at the words. That's why I forgot it was her that sang the song. But I'll listen to certain songs and I'll think about it in a spiritual aspect or I'll apply that song to me or part of my journey. And so... Right before I meditate, if I want to meditate to a song like that, I'll take the aspect of all oh, she's saying about a freaking man because that ain't what I'm what, attuning my frequency to at that time. I'm just saying, can I, can I focus on me? 
Can I focus on the matters of my heart? Can I focus long enough that I'm using my human imagination to quantum jump over there? Where I'm using my heart to feel what I'm quantum jumping over there and make that a right now reality for my tomorrow. Can you focus? <laughs> yeah. Can you focus? Yeah. So you do that. You know, matter of fact, and in the biblical text, two or three are joined together, I'll be a God in the midst. If if, 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 if you pay, pay attention, like sometimes, not all the time, depending upon the situation, you can get other people in alignment to say, like, maybe your husband, maybe your children. Like, say, for instance, you want a new car, a new house or something. Two or three being like-minded beings focusing on that one thing, and you tell them, hey, we want to move to da-da-da-da-da. This is what I'm doing with my human imagination. We move into this here state and we're going to have this here kind of call and we're going to have this here business. All right, bet. Every time that we do our imagination scene, let's quantum jump there. That's where you can get like other people in alignment, focusing on one thing, how y'all want. That'll speed up your manifestation practice is what I'm doing. And so I say that to say, when you are not um, so called well, you can actually get people that know about spirituality and know about the law of assumption and know how to focus and the ability to focus by using the human imagination to, to tune in on that place in your body where you're experiencing dis-ease and disharmony and where there are two or more, it'll be a God in the midst. So basically what it's saying is you can't drop enough of this here energy that thing will be healed. That thing that you want will be attained because now you conjured up so much energy that it got to come faster because so many people are focused on it. See, see, collectively, we can move mountains. <laughs> but when we're separate, we're separate and we don't know our own power, we think life is happening to us. We think we little G kind of gods. We think, oh, well, I got to just lay down and die because the doctor said that this is it for me. You know, I just might as well just go ahead and die. You think you got to conform to that, but no, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And all that's saying is, can you focus on me? <laughs> Baby, can you focus? That's all they're saying. Focus on that thing, whatever it is you want. Because you could be doing have anything. Anything. It all goes up to your ability to have a controlled imagination and be able to focus and be able to feel that thing to your heart. Because that's all, all the power coming from whatever is going on in your life is because of what you've been focused on. What you've been feeling in your heart. Whether that thing is good or a bad thing. It came from the abundance of your heart. You spoke that thing into existence. You thought about that thing being that way. You could, you could lie to me and say, no, I didn't. My life is unfair. But if you turn around and you think about all of them thoughts that you were having, then you could look back at me and be like, well, yeah, you might be on to something. Yeah, because I, I really had this fear for a long time. And I, and I really you know, didn't want to be in this place. So I kind of thought about it a lot. Yeah, I could see where you're kind of, kind of, sort of saying something the truth for there. Because <laughs> we created it. We manifest Oh, thank you for the hearts. Yeah. Hey, uh, while I hair left, hey, thank you for joining me, babe. It's good to see you here. Hey, my love. The trick is how to keep it. How to keep what part? This has been the best hour of my day. Oh, thank you, Ladybug, for being here. How to keep what? The trick to how to keep the controlled imagination. You practice it, and that's I'm, I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. You practice it. You know, for an appointed time, I had to keep a controlled imagination. I had to keep a controlled imagination for the state of being that I'm in. You just keep on practicing and you just don't, you just don't let up off of that thought. No matter what things are showing you in physical reality, you don't let up. It, you, you, you begin to say, it can't be. It can't be. It can't be. You deny, you deny this physical because the physical is actually your old thoughts. Until you stay with the controlled imagination of the new thoughts that you want to happen. 
Oh, yeah, the ability to focus. That's what I, I thought you meant. Yeah, you you keep on focusing. Like I, I shared on one of my TikToks, on one of my older TikToks, the, this particular house that I had um I had manifested that I'm in right now, they were it was time for the the um the closing and the people it seemed like in the physical reality that um they were giving me the hardest time harassing me and, and you know prolonging me and I, I had to stay here I wasn't a resident here but I had to stay there here a little longer with the people who I stayed with at that time <laughs> and I didn't anticipate being here but the, the closing officers was just prolonging me and not responding to me and, and asking me crazy questions and and I my ability to focus it never did waver. I knew I would be here. But I took a walk one day. I took a walk by myself. And I was focusing. And I knew that this was home. I knew this was this here house was my home the moment I walked in the door. Before I put my foot across the little, the little step to get in. I told the agent, I said, this is it. This is the one that I was manifesting. I said, Helen, I know it. I know it because my ability to focus was up to par. I know this is my towel because this is the towel that I, 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 I stepped upon barefoot when I was healing this thing. I know this is my carpet. I was like, oh my God, those are them. I know this is the um, cement fence. I knew, I knew it because I was carrying it with me, but the people was giving me the hardest time. And I said to myself, well, I'm going to release this. I'm not going to create resistance. I went for that long walk and I, I made peace with myself. And I said, I, I focused. I know that was, that's my house. I know that's my house. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to release this resistance. And it feels so good to just know that my house is just like that. It feels so good in my human imagination just to be able to quantum jump there. It makes me feel so happy when I'm just in my mind, quantum jumping there, and I'm feeling the love, and I'm feeling like that is home. It feels so good that I don't even care no more in the physical reality if these people are telling me no because my ability to focus, my ability to get in alignment is up to par, and I know that my home, I'm carrying it with me so they can't take nothing from me. So I went on a walk that day. Just to make sure that I was cool with going back and making that phone call and telling them closing officers, you know what, do what you have to do. Because I know this here place is my home. I don't know what you're going to do, but do what you have to do. Because <laughs> they wasn't about to mess with my ability to focus. Like this, this is what I'm telling you. It, it, Right before you about to get that manifestation, sometimes all hell begin to break loose. And right before you about to get delivered from that sickness or disease, it might feel like it's going the wrong way. Right before you think you're going to get the job, you may, they, may, they may end up calling somebody else and, and asking them to be interviewed. But baby, you cannot lose your ability to focus. So I made a phone call to the closing people and I told them, I said, you know what? Well, the um the lady that I was dealing with, I said, tell the um tell them to deny me. And she's like, what? She was a little conjured little lady. She said, what? I said, you heard me. Tell them. I said, deny me. Because I just want to go back home. I don't want to create any further resistance. Tell them it's okay. Deny me. Because I knew in my mind if they denied me for this house that I at least get my deposit back. And I just knew that I, I knew I was going to be here anyway in some kind of way. My ability to focus, they wasn't about to mess with that. They wasn't about to mess with my frequency con constantly calling me, telling me, oh, well, what about this? And oh, this here and oh, that there. And what? Because everything, I was squeaky clean and there was no uh, reason why they should have been calling me. It should have been closed. And she said, are you sure? I said, yeah, I'm sure. And then I walked up in the door from my family. And I told them, I was like, well, I told them to go ahead on it. They denied me. So I'm about to um, give me a plane ticket and carry my boy back home. And everything all right. And they're like, what? So you said this is the house that you manifested. What you mean you're going to walk away from it? But see, that's when you release, you release all of, of, of resistance. 
you release having attachment to it. You fall in love with the idea that you just quantum jump there and that you had the ability to focus. So, so you have, you carry this thing with you regardless if you experience this thing in the physical reality or not. You carry any wellness with you. You carry your happily ever after with you. That's where you got to get. You carry your home with you, your new car with you, your partner with you or whatever it is. You carry that thing with you. And so you know if you ever feel like you want to be present with that state of being, all you got to do is jump quantum jump there and be in that state of being. And so I told that lady, okay, tell them, just tell them people, you know, because you can't, you can't see them and the people that's handling your loan or whatever. I said, deny me. <laughs> and three minutes later, they were like, okay, we're ready for the close. The close is going to take place tomorrow. You've been approved and da, da, da. You don't have to get on the plane. You can do it now. We could go to the closing and da, da, da. And they were just ready. But I was, I was willing to walk away from that because I know what my thoughts were. I know I had the ability to, to, to have that controlled imagination and focus on this thing. I know this thing was mine. You playing around with me? Okay, you won't play with me? Deny me then. I know, I know I, who I am. I know I had this, this spoken word. I know, I know what I created. And if it's for you, nobody, no thing outside, you can take the things that you manifested away from you. That's when you know, just like in religion, in, in religion, they'll say, you got to know that you know that you know that you know. Well, guess what? I knew that this was it for me. So now since you're playing with me, I'm going to call your bluff. Deny me. That's what you do. I want to see you try to deny me because I know I manifested this thing. I know this thing mine. Don't, don't have me over here trying to trying to test me, so to speak. Trying to have me wobbling energetically, so to speak. Don't come over here with no rapport about asking me nothing. Because I knew energetically I was in alignment before I manifested this thing already. Deny me. Try to deny me. Do you want to get to that place? You want to get to that place? And that takes mindfulness. Then take that place takes you being able to control that mind. And that goes back to the beginning of this video, being able to look at that dot on the wall, telling your mind, look, I, I want you to look at this here dot. Telling your, your mind, I want you to listen to this here breath. Telling your mind, I, look, I need you to feel what's going on in here. And don't you start giving me them other outside thoughts. It starts with that ability to do that there. And you build up from three to five minutes. This is called meditation. Meditation is different ways. But all meditation really is, is being able to control that mind, that ability to focus when all hell is going and breaking loose. This is what, what, what mindfulness was supposed to be doing with, with Peter when he was supposed to be walking on that water in the biblical text. He was supposed to have a controlled imagination and he was supposed to be able to walk on that water. But his inability to focus had him paying attention to the waves and the current that was outside of him, things that were outside of him because he didn't practice mindfulness like the Christ conscious one had practiced. The Christ conscious one had the ability to remain focused no matter what the waves were doing. He stayed focused on that dot. He stayed focused on his breath. He stayed focused on his energy, his inner God force, no matter what the heck was going on out here. But Peter could not. <laughs> so your or our journey is about becoming like the Christ conscious one with the ability to focus, <laughs> with the ability to experience and feel. No matter what the waves of the current are doing out there. Trying to send bad frequencies. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt and timers. And it happens. It happens to us all energetically. Because what's all sometimes we all doubt ourselves. Sometimes we're afraid of ourselves and don't trust ourselves. Because really we're afraid of our own power. We know we secret. Secretly we all know that we are. And so that fear tactic comes in. Kind of like to kind of like keep us in on one level, but we have many levels, many dimensions to explore, and there's many layers because we're God going down many portals, and our conscious and subconscious mind is like um, our subconscious mind is like feminine energy, 
it gives life to other things, other questions, other ideas. It, it gives birth and it reproduces over and over. And we create this. And then when we create this, we want to create this. And then it's like we're having baby after baby after baby with feminine energy being a life force. Every new life. Energy. The energy. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. So that's how I practice it. I mean, it's just different ways to do it. But we all getting or going back to that one God, one faith, one baptism. There's so many different routes, scenic routes, you know, the, the HOV lane, you know. But we all going to the same damn place, babe. Yeah, what happened with you? You said it means it's getting safe to trust the body that finds you what you want. With the house you're in, that finds me what I want. Well, if that's what you're saying, I I created what I wanted. So to find, I'm thinking you're saying for them to find me something later. I had already created. I I trust either way. I knew that. I just know. I just I just walk on this belief of mine that all things are working out for me. All things, my good and my bad. And so, I just trust that. I just trust that. Yeah, and I, I feel like everybody should understand that that is all the good and the so-called bad, the delays and the, and the so-called setbacks is really just set up for something better. Feeling of deservingness without guilt. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I didn't have any guilt. As it pertained to it, I didn't feel guilty. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. I don't, I don't really, I don't really feel as if they're delusions. I feel like it's a part of you that wants to express itself and experience itself. You know, I believe that everything is purposeful. So when you add shame and guilt, mm, it's all stemming from your mind. If that's what you mean by illusion. But it's a part of you that wants to express itself. And that wants to get on the other side of the um, ex uh, spectrum of it all. Because see all that pain and that guilt and that. And that's the opposite of what God is. You know in the biblical text how they say. He hasn't given us the spirit of fear. But a power and love and a sound mind. So God wants to experience the fear. It, God wants to experience guilt. God wants to experience the all. You know, we, if you think about it, we already came from source energy where we experience love. We experience these things, just like in the biblical text, the prodigal son. We separate ourselves, so to speak, from the love of God, go our separate ways, while out, get involved in all this trauma and all this hurt and this pain. This becomes our story. This becomes our story and it is all purposeful because in knowing what we don't want in this story, then we realize what we do want and then we return back to the Father, so to speak, back to God, the bosom of God, to love or whatever. We forget about the fear and the guilt. We heal our trauma and our chakra pools of energy and we just return it back to source. But in the meantime, in between time, we're experiencing itself. And so it's, it's all of it is God. God experiencing itself at a low frequency. God experiencing itself at a high frequency. God experiencing itself and returning its experience to itself. Then the totality, the conscious state of being of God becomes greater and greater based upon all of our experiences. So it's not really an illusion, so to speak. It's real to that particular person that's going through that thing. It's real enough to create uh, dis-ease and disharmony. Because keep in mind, if it is an illusion, since God is both, God is both sides of the spectrum. If it is an illusion, it has to be, part of it has to be real too, to that person, to that observer, right? So it's both. If it's nothing, then it has to also be everything. Because, see, God is both sides of the spectrum. If it's so-called evil, then it has to have some kind of good in there, too. If it's yin, it has to have some kind of yang in there, too. Because we're underneath the law of polarity. So it's both. <laughs> yeah, I felt bad for falling into that trap for a long time. All things, no good shall be withheld from me. Yeah, definitely. Experiencing all things. All things, and, and so you look at the bad thing like, oh, I had to, I had to go through this, 
it got to be some good here, though. It's bad, but I had to go through with this. And don't, don't, don't make yourself suffer over the so-called bad. Know that the bad is just still you, still you learning. But you're winning, though. You're winning. You're always winning and learning. Ain't no setbacks. You're right on course. Don't beat yourself up for where you are. That's where those silly attachments come in. When you start putting a time stamp on it, when you put, start putting, you know, a requirement or attachment on things like, oh, I'm supposed to be married or I'm, my biological clock is ticking and I should have been in this place financially by now in my life. Stop all of that. Just be. Because you make yourself suffer when you do those things, when you guilt trip on yourself. When you, when you put a stumbling block in front of yourself, when you create all those silly attachments, just be, just enjoy this right here, right now moment sometimes too, in your manifestation, in your ability to focus. Enjoy this now too. In between quantum jumping, remember to enjoy this now. And if now is not where your new house is, know that this here part, you manifested this here part too. I see when I was back home in New Orleans and hurricane after hurricane was destroying my home. I manifested that part too. When, when I knew that I was going to come here and have another home, I was, I, I was being in the now there sometimes because I knew that I created that, that gap between me getting this home and between all the prior hurricanes. See that little cushion right there? I created that part too, true toy. And I want you to experience that thing. And I wanted to paint. I, I shared some of the videos where I was like painting in the garage in the old home and stuff because I wanted to enjoy that part of the story too. You want to experience all of God. So don't don't try to, you know, in your quantum jumping, jump because it feels good to jump. But then when you come back to your now, enjoy your now too now. Use your human imagination in your now too. Be thankful for your now too, because this is equivalent to being happy where you are. Sometimes the unfoldment don't happy happen until you get happy right here, right now where you are. And that's equivalent to like when praises, we learned this in church, when praises go up, blessings come down. Because now you're grateful for where you are and energetically the, your subconscious mind is sending out a signal that I'm grateful Send me more things to be grateful for. Instead of you being hard on yourself and you judging yourself and you disappointing with yourself because of the grief and when you're not at in your life energetically or physically, be grateful. Be happy in that right now. Yeah. Makes sense, right? Well, I had a job and for a long time, I wanted to move from this job. This was when I was in corporate America. This was, I, I think my, my title was a service operator then for the lineman I was doing dispatch and they did a reorg in this company and I had just got my second degree now after my second degree in my mind I'm like okay now I'm gonna be able to post for any job that I want to in corporate America and I'm finally be in a county where I kind of wanted to be at that time and everything just gonna be perfect I'm out of school now bam bam watch this and bam the company does a reorg and in this reorg, they're giving away packages, they're relocating people, they're firing people in all these different teams, and they moved me to construction. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm about to be dressing, wearing high heels to, to work, and, you know, briefcase, and yeah, yeah, I'm in the executive suite over here. And I got moved to construction, y'all. I got moved to construction. And so now I'm in construction, and I hated it. My children were younger. And it was around the winter time. And I remember that because when I would go to work, it would still be dark outside. And now my children are younger. So my children now are being seen to the bus by my neighbors. I was the type of mom that I used to want to be there in the morning to see my, uh, my children off to, to wish them a good day and kiss them and all that good extra stuff because I wanted them to feel the, my, the mother's love. Like, right? I couldn't do that no more. So on my way to work every morning, I would cry. I ain't even wear makeup. I ain't put foundation. I ain't put no makeup on, no eye mascara and all that stuff because I look like a raccoon. By the time I got to this this exit in New Orleans, the ramp where I had to go to my job, I wasn't feeling grateful for that moment. I was feeling sad 
I was feeling like, well, I need God kind of energy, like, right? And so one morning I decided, and this was before I even became spiritual, really, really conscious. I decided, I said, you know what, God? And I was just talking to, just like, to God, just like this here. Like, you know what, God? I'm going to go and just, you know, God, I'm going to go and I'm going to stop this crying. I'm going to stop crying every morning. I'm going to just go and I'm going to find my happy here right now. I'm going to find my happy because it got to be a reason why I'm going to this job. You done took me away from, from my comfort job where I was seven minutes away from my home. You done sent me way out here like, okay, I'm talking to God like God is outside. You're like, right? I ain't know no better back then. You done sent me way out here and, and now I can't even see my children off. And this is horrible. And I'm in, I don't even want to dress up because I got to walk on rocks now. And I got to be with the lineman now. And I got to go and I got to travel to different states. And I got to restore power. And I got to work overtime. And da, da, da. I was just complaining about everything. Like, right? So that was my last day. I said, this is going to be my last day. I'm going to find my happy here. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. And so I got, I started getting a more momentum of um, talking to the people about health and wellness at the sunrise morning meetings. Yeah. I would do se um, stretching exercise. I would do team building exercise. I was trying to find my happy, y'all. I got on the public affair committee team, and I would do volunteer things when in the local neighborhood for storm and, you know, and, and being present, you know, um, with our energy shirt and just being the voice of the community, so to speak. And I would go to the, the council meetings. I, I was so active because me being active was in alignment with where my passion was. My passion was to help people. My passion was about health and wellness. My passion was in the in, the in Shape initiative. I was just finding my happy. And I would do team building exercises with the alignment. And one day, because I was being grateful for where I was at that time in space, I was being in my right now moment. One day, I was outside and I had them coordinated the team doing exercise and we was playing basketball and we was doing um, the um, the potato sack um, uh, jumping with the little potato uh, pillow step jumping in the yard and we was throwing the football, just all kind of team building exercises where we were being our brother's keeper and we had to bind blindfolds, all kind of exercise I did with the people to find my happy. One day while I was doing that, I got a call from one of the VPs and he asked me to go to another part in corporate America to work. Another part of the company. And I remember like it was just that one on the phone outside just looking at all the team building exercises that I had coordinated and looking at the linemen. And I said, oh, oh, I was just starting to have fun. Because in that moment in time and space, I was like, oh, oh, I'm happy now. What are you, what are you calling me to go to corporate America for? I done found my happy. So I encourage you to find your happy right where you are. Because there's got to be something right where you are that makes you happy. It got to be something. In the midst of all of your complaining and murmuring. And I got the job. I got, I got moved from the lineman position in, in, in the field to the corporate America job that I wanted because I found my happy right there where I was. So you, you just look for things, just find things, just find things to make you happy. And I'm not telling you just to, to, to blow a bunch of enough things and whisper sweet enough things in your ear. No, I'm telling you these things because this is equivalent for you to stay in alignment and feel good already before you get there. See, when you want something energetically, like a little bit more love, a little bit more happiness, you got to get in alignment with that love and that happiness first. You got to become it. So this is equivalent to you staying in alignment and sending out a signal to the universe or to your subconscious mind, which is the universe, that says, hey, I'm happy right now. And so your subconscious mind is going to yield to you, guess what? more of that same said happiness oh oh give her more but if you're sitting out a second you're saying i'm guilty i'm not worthy why me you know then the same thing is happening to you too you are sending out a signal and your universe or your subconscious mind has to yield to you more
Give her more reasons why she should feel unworthy. Give her more reasons why she should feel guilty. Give her more. So you're always giving. You might as well feel happy now so you can get more happiness. You might as well feel abundance now so you can get more things that are abundant too. Because when those praises of being thankful and happy and excited go up, more of those said blessings like that energetically will come down. <laughs> when you understand this, you, you stop playing yourself. You stop complaining. You stop murmuring. You cut it short. I, 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 in my spoken word for people that know me and know that I think like this here, I'll I be like, they'll, t they'll be telling me they'll want to share something that they saw or heard about or they're going through. And I'm listening to the beginning and I, and then I'll think it to myself, uh oh, they about to tell me something that's going to get them out of alignment. And, uh, and all I got to say, all I got to say to the people that are around me is get up out of there. And then, then they, everything just changes. Get up out of there. And so I say to you, get up out of there. And what I mean when I'm saying get up out of there, that, that means that mean you have thoughts that are feminine energy and you're giving life to them. But the life that you're giving to them is really causing more of that. So you're giving life to things that's not serving you well. I'd rather you get up out of there. Get up out of there and give life to things that's going to propel you to get to the next quantum field. That's going to give you the things that you're wanting versus the things that you don't want. So all I got to say to, to my loved ones and my friends is, uh-oh, get up out of there. And, 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 and it works like a charm because they know me. They know me that I'm not going to sit here and listen to you murmur and complain because the best thing that I could offer you is wholeness. The best thing that I could offer you is my alignment because if I stay up in alignment, I'm holding, I'm holding that mark for you to come up here. I'm not about to stoop to your, your level because if you think about it, your angels, if you believe in this type of thing, your Jesus, if you believe in that type of thing, your ancestors, if you believe in that type of thing, you don't care, I don't care what type of thing you believe in just as long as you believe in something. Whatever it is that you believe in, though, it don't come down to the pity party. No, no, you got to go to it. And when you go to it, you got to rise up to the frequency of it, leash you down here begging it, and it ain't even down there and so that's why the people that's down there begging and crying and murmuring and complaining they talking about why me are you even there is there really a god well yeah but you gotta come up here <laughs> you gotta come up here if you want to talk to it you gotta come up here if you want to commune with it you can't be begging <laughs> you gotta think it not strange or think it not robbery to be equal with god energetically if you want to experience God, because heaven is a place. It's a prepared place for prepared people. But you gotta be heaven. You gotta be heaven first to see it. That's the trick about this whole thing. So some people not experiencing heaven, some people just experiencing hell. And some people feel so alone. Yeah. Because energetically they are alone down there in the lower parts of their mind. Trying to get out. <laughs> Trying to get out. Whew. Okay, y'all. I think I done preached enough. <laughs> I think I done preached enough. Hey, Big T, you still up in here? Anyway, I'm about to call it a night on my live. But I really enjoy talking to you all for this time. I really enjoy you all being here and getting to know how I think. And I feel hopeful since you are my reflection that even if you don't use this information that I've shared with you about the mindset and control of your mind, that you have successfully downloaded this to your subconscious mind, your mind that never sleeps. Even if you tuned out from me and started doing things in your home and somebody bothered you through this here, your subconscious mind heard everything that I said. <laughs> We'll find a job. Yeah. Will I find a job? Yeah. When you know that you will find one. And not until then. But this is sunk into your subconscious mind. And maybe it's, it won't be tomorrow. Maybe it'll be next year. Maybe it'll be next week. Maybe it'll be next lifetime. Since you allowed me to have my spoken word in this time and place. 
you're going to remember my words. And you're going to use my words. You're not going to just remember them, but you're going to be a doer of the word. You're going to have good soil at that time. And you're going to evolve in your life. And you're going to take my word and evolve and prosper and leave a legacy behind in your kingdom. But I am thankful that you gave ear to my words on this day. I am thankful and I feel proud of you and your growth. I feel proud of you and I'm thankful that you allowed me into your kingdom to remind you of who you are. I feel thankful that you asked a question of why. Because it allowed you to come to my live today. And so this video was from my heart to yours to remind you of something that you already knew. That you are God in physical form. And that you can be, do, or have anything when you put your mind to it. So whenever you're ready, God, sit back on your throne again. Be blessed, babe. All love. I appreciate you so much. Thank you, babe. <laughs> you locked in every word, I big T. All right, babe. <laughs>